What is up, Beacon Nicked? How we doing? What's good, everybody? What is good? What is going down? Let's see if I turn that down too much. I don't know. Some of these songs are louder than others. Congratulations to Pineapple Pope for claiming first, my friend. Pineapple Pope is first. We love it. We love it. Folks, I don't know what we're doing tonight. I got no clue. <laughs> I, got no, I got no clue what we're doing tonight. Uh, so this has already been a weird day and a weird night. How are we today? I'm doing good. It's been busy, though. It's been a big day. Um, I've not stopped moving since Sunday night. I've just been going, 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 going with so many fun things to do. And this is a weird one because we have Checkathon on Friday. And so we're pretty much playing Game Together games for eight hours on Friday, virtually. Uh, and so it's kind of like, are we playing Minecraft on Friday? Yeah, we're playing Minecraft on Friday. Are we playing Overwatch on Friday? Yeah, we're probably playing Overwatch on Friday. And so it's such a weird, like, those are the two games that I put on the roster for tonight. We didn't get a lot of turnout for them, so that's already got me a little a little trepidatious. Pineapple, you voted for, for Minecraft, and you're here. So that makes me say, you know, maybe Minecraft. But I also don't know if I really want to play Minecraft. <laughs> That's where I find myself. That's where I find myself. I'm in, a, I'm, I'm in a weird place with games right now. So I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what I want to do. It's awful. It's awful, isn't it? I don't really want to play Overwatch either. I don't really want to play any game. I'm kind of gamed out. Which is a bad place for the pastor of a nerd church to be. I can't find a party game that I'm really digging right now. You know what I'm saying? I think it's the party game that's 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 dragging me down. I don't really like multiplayer games anyway. That is my wife. Let me make sure everything is okay. I'll be back momentarily. We back, we back, we back, we back. You won't be able to play until 8-ish. So we got time! Look, we got time to decide. We got time to play with possibilities. We're all good. We'll figure it out. We will figure it out and we'll have some fun doing it. Uh, I wanted to show you guys this. Um, so all of you probably know my obsession by now with uh, Omori. They announced a holiday collection. And look at this, you guys. Look at it. Look, look at the sweater. So the, the official collection is coming out on the 11th. So there'll be even more to see. But please look at this sweater. And look at this mug. I, I have to have it. Like I have to have this mug, okay? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I have to have it. Do you see Mary is putting up the Christmas tree and Hero's helping her? Oh my goodness! I have to have it. The wrapping paper doesn't look themed. This is all I think they've shown us. So it's just a something, just something, just a mug, and then the sweater. That's all I've seen. But I need it. I need it! Look, it's got the gross little red hands. Up and down on the D-pad, the something eye. It's got the light bulb. I don't know what this bird creature is. It's got the thorns that are around uh, around uh, Basil. It looks so good. Guys, I love Amori. I love it so much. And I can't believe we're getting we're getting we're getting more merch. Omocat, by the way, kills it with merch. That's that's kind of who she was. 
before I I think she I think she's a she. I think she goes by she. I'm like 99% certain. But Elmo Cat was a shop before she made games. And so she has a ton of stuff. Look at all this stuff. A lot of stuff. Now, granted, a lot of this has come out in future years. But are you kidding me? I need this art book. Look at this art. She partnered with Pokemon Center. This is adorable. But as far as her Omori stuff, look at these. Look at these plushies! How do I not own these plushies yet? How on earth have I have I lived this long and I don't have an Aubrey plush? It's only $20. Look at that tie-dye. Oh, I love that. That's very nice. That's, ooh, I like that one even more. The stranger tie is even better. But that would spook my children. I can't wear that because my children would be very scared of that one. It's got to be ominous enough. I like the paint splatter. Love it. Ah, oh, it looks so good. Looks so good. Oh, that's cool. Is that more subtle? No. <laughs> No, no, not very subtle. <laughs> I mean, my children must also be very scared of that. That ain't gonna happen. No way. Man, I just love Omori. A mouse pad of Pluto, that's great. Now, I do have the game. I did buy the physical edition and it came with a little bit of swag, but it wasn't much. Look at me, wow. I just need all of them. I need all of the things. I need all of the things. All of the time. One of these days. One of these days, I'll have all of the things. But that day is not today. Today is not the day that I have all the things. One of these days. One of these days. One of these days. That's a throwback. That is a real throwback. Stop. Oh my God. What? Oh my God. Did what? How did I miss this? Because it literally dropped yesterday, that's how. Alright you guys, we're eating we're eating this. We're eating this. We're uh we're just gonna take the we're gonna take the DMCA. I gotta listen to this. This is a song by Toby Fox and Atoki Hana. Let's see who Atoki Hana is. Atoki Hana is a singer-songwriter from Japan. Tell me more. Where would I know Itoki Hana from? What's what's their most famous thing? Not not much. Spotify, Itoki Hana only has 16 1620 listeners. I mean that's nothing to shake a stick at, but that's okay. Humble. It's very humble. So uh, it looks like Toby Toby Maybe did the art and music? No, Omocat did the music video. No, I mean, I, I gotta watch this. I'm legally required to watch this, you guys. I don't know if this is hyper pop or what. I have no idea what this is about to be. But I hope there's no wordy dirts. Surely no wordy dirts. But let's uh, let's give it a listen. So this is uh, this is "Skies Forever Blue" by Toby Fox and Itoki Hana, as illustrated by Omoka. This is like the smashing of all of my worlds. I should say, but 
I'm sorry, is that Hero? I'm sorry, is that just Hero now? That's just Hero, right? My mind lost to you. Like nervous there's gonna be a twist I'm so nervous there's gonna be a twist at some point because I feel like I feel like I feel like Toby exclusively does twists and so does Emma cat and I'm just real nervous What? Exist though. something I should say, but surely it can wait another day. I mean, it was fine, but I want to know why does that exist? <laughs> why is that a thing? How did those three happen to meet and create that? And why? And for what reason? <laughs> I 
and then just want to know why. The uh, the art was super cute. The character were, were good, but the song was really just okay. Very, very interesting. You know, that's something you don't think about. It's just like all these artists and internet creators and these game devs online, they all know each other. You know? They only know each other. Some way, shape, or form. What's up, Taco? How we doing, my friend? We just got done watching a very random music video. I'm gonna go spam general real quick. I just realized I forgot to do that. Taco down there, I see Chuck Bartowski. What's up? What's up? And I see Tab. I don't think I said hello to Tab down there. At Pineapple, if you're still around, we're happy you're here. I'm a little, I'm a little, uh, what's a word for, what's a word for not knowing? I'm a little uncertain. I'm a little wayward right now. I'm trying to figure out what to do. I'm trying to figure out what to play. I don't really want to play anything. I don't feel like having any competitive vibes, so that's kind of why I think probably Minecraft is going to end up being what it is, especially since Pineapple wanted to play. Um, but I really, I just have no urge, man. I want to play a cozy game. I want to play some kind of cozy game. Some kind of cozy game. I can always call, uh, show you guys the game that I'm obsessed with right now. Citizen Sleeper. I don't know how much... It's only, it's not even a gig. That could be something I could do. It's the game that I've put way too many hours into out of nowhere. No apparent reason. Just, just loving it. Just into the story. Let's see how many hours I've logged into this random game. I'm eight hours and 10 minutes into a game. I've played every day for four days. I've played every day for four days. Now, yesterday I didn't play very long. But the first day that I started playing it, I played, uh, I played for four hours, which just doesn't happen with me. That is not, that is not this guy. This guy is not four hour gamer, you know? That's just not me, for sure. Let's see what achievements I need to get. No, locked achievements. still quite a few achievements I've not unlocked. Man, that just excites me even more! Oh, it just makes me even more excited to play the game! So according to this, I'm two hours away from the completionist, and I'm... there's no way. I'm only halfway into the rewards. Do you guys care at all about... about social? Or not social, about, uh, about uh, trophies and stuff? What do we have out there that are trophy hunters? Achievement hunters. That is not me. I'm not that guy, pal. Yeah, what the heck? I can at least show you guys a tutorial. 
I wonder if it has PC settings or if it's purely for controller. It is PC. Like good try. Like good try. Let's try. Why not, dude? What have we got to lose? Huh? What have we got to lose? Absolutely. Nothing. Say it again. Nah. Ah! Yes, always. I wish I had a way to turn on the yes, always. For Xbox. Yes, always let me play the game. Always do it. Okay, I actually would like to start a new game. It's not going to erase my old game, right? Let me just make 100% sure. Okay, yeah. See, there's three. There's three. New game in this one. Okay, so I played mine as the operator. You get to first uh, choose your character class. I went with just middle line just because I thought it would be best to try like, I figured that was medium challenge, whatever. But I'm gonna look at these. So this is the extractor who has extra endurance but less intuitiveness. And this is the machinist who has extra engineering but not as good with engaging. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go with this guy. Ooh, and it's scrap items? That's really nice for a late game. Yeah, I don't want sunbathe. Let's go for it. Uh, there's a lot of reading in this game, so be prepared for a lot of reading, but... I'll at least be able to bypass the tutorial. Because I know how to play. It's a dice roller, so the basic gist of the game is that you're trying to complete tasks depending on... Uh, how many, you know, dice you roll, right? And you get five dice to roll every single cycle, every single day that you're in game. And you have to use those dice accordingly. There are a variety of ways that you can use those dice, uh, such as with like conversations, with things that you have to do. And everything has risks and rewards depending on how high you're willing to wager your dice. So if you want to play a low point dice, you're risking things. Play a high point dice, you're almost always going to get what you want first thing you become aware of on waking is the disconnect, the delay between thinking and feeling, between wanting to act and acting, minor, almost imperceptible, but always present. Where are you? I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Looks a little easy now. It's at its worst when waking, when yourself has spent many dark hours recalling what it felt like to be real, to be a person, to be in a body that was indisputably yours. Forget that body. You resist nostalgia. It's pointless, especially now. This is the moment to reach out, not curl inwards. This is your moment of escape. Even if it feels immediately like you traded one prison for another, smaller, colder, lifeless. Reach out. You almost laugh. Or you would if there was room, or even air, to do so. The walls of the container are immediately present, cold, hard, at your back and face, cramping your limbs. You resist the desire to stretch. Knowing that the claustrophobia comes next, and retreat a little from your central nervous system. It isn't painful. Not like you used to know pain, at least. In emergency mode, pain is a message delivered with efficiency and ease, a reminder that harm is imminent. There is no insistent throb, no trembling nerves, just a warning delivered with the banal quality of a digital notification. Right now, there are thousands of them. Remember the plan. You mostly remember that it wasn't a good plan, but then your options were limited. Once you got the itch to get out by any means possible, it was either that plan or something much worse. It was at least simple. Collapse the shaft, drift away into the chaos, slip into cargo processing, seal yourselves into containers, then just hope the freighter left before you were missed. Some were lost in the shaft. Others never made it to the meeting point. Only a few made it to the containers. But the freighter, as far as you know, left. This feels like enough. Enough to know that you might no longer be on that grim and heartless rock. Even if, in the airless hold of a freighter, you might freeze solid long before you reach any destination. Try to rest. But you're restless. It's been a long time since you left. Surely months. Surely weeks. Maybe months. You are dully aware of damage to your legs, your right arm. You've been reserving energy as much as possible. But your body has still needed to shut down many of its systems to protect you. You've spent much of that time asleep knowing that anything else would be impossible to endure. You feel the weight of that impossibility begin to gather. It's time to sleep again. 
to nudge this false body into inducing delta waves in your emulated mind, and once again, recoil into a dream of when you were once a person. Time passes. The cold creeps further in. You feel something. Warmth. Not true warmth, but the indication of a presence. Your joints release from their rigor. Sound, too, everywhere screeching and shimmering, so loud that your body ducks your hearing to protect its sensors. Then light. White as the cold, softer and softer, until in a haze of dirty yellow, a figure appears. You're out. We survived! It's been a few hours since Dragos pulled you from the container. You sit huddled in a corner of his scrapyard, swaddled in the reflective folds of a mylar blanket. You're slowly coming back to consciousness, back to life, and you stare at the ornately curving element of an improvised heater. You're surrounded by angular, incoherent lumps of ships, some corroded beyond recognition, others still carrying glassy wounds along their edges where a plasmar sliced them apart. As you trace their shapes with fogged eyes, you hear a voice. So, sleeper, you all fold yet? Almost. Never seen one of you come in like this. New frames must have better perseverance than Sub-Zero Vac. Seen more than a few of you frozen solid to hull plates or inside out of locks in my time. They weren't so lucky. Dragos comes into focus, shrouded in makeshift tact, his headset with its glinting eyes the mark of a drone operator. On his shoulder, one of his symbi symbiotically linked drones perches, its irising eye locking you with an unflinching stare. Last living sleeper that came through this yard was a while ago. They didn't last long. Uh, I plan to survive. You aren't sure if he hears you. Oh, I won't ask what led you to do it, to sell yourself to a corporation. And I suppose you know you can't go back. Your old body, as it is now. And you are just software. A rogue emulation, illegally possessing corporate property. You nod along. You remember biometrically signing the forms, the cold floor on your feet as you padded to the sleeper cells, the promise of a life off-world. But as you do, you get the now familiar sensation that these aren't your memories. These are things you know, but not things you feel. You're no longer that person. You're an offshoot, a copy. What you won't know is what's ahead. At least the last one didn't. There's no easy way to put it. That body of yours is falling apart. It's the same for any sleeper who makes it out. SNRP wants to protect their property, but if they can't keep hold of you, well, it, no one can. You remember that too, or at least rumors of it from the other sleepers. Planned obsolescence, a built-in dependence on the regularly administrated supplements that were part of your routine. Stop taking them and your body begins to shut down, separate from your emulated mind. How long has it been? How long do you have? But for now, sleeper, you're one of the lucky ones. Drago's glances up and away, towards the glassy dome of the yard. The eye is the best place you could be right now. Stay silent. Drago's impatiently shifts his weight. We know where the eye is because I know where the eye is. <laughs> the eye is the ship that we've landed on. Uh, look, I got things to be getting on with. He trails off. There's an old freight container I've been using as storage out in the stacks. We haven't been pulling in much valuable scrap these days, so you're welcome in it. Something wells up inside of you. Emotion, fatigue. You shakily get to your feet. Nod. All right, you don't up there. You look like you need some rest. And with that, Drago stalks back into the wrecks. His drone's already converging on a resting hulk. Plasma flashes silhouetting his spindly figure as he returns to work. Okay, we don't need the tutorial, but the basic gist is that we have a home to go to, and we have a lot of other things that we got to get done. So first off, let's just go to our container and end our cycle for the day. Whenever we do that, we're going to cost two energy and one condition. I'll tell you more about those as we see them on the UI. This game is available in Game Pass, by the way, so if you have Game Pass, you can play it right now. You wait curled up in the corner of the container and begin slowly assembling the world around you. After all this time, you still find this body, the one you wake in now, strange and disjointed. Its message is readable, but somehow wrong. You sit up, pulling the Mylar blanket close against the cold. Here you are on this ruined station, millions of miles from anyone you know. Are you still in the system? Did any of the others make it out? It's impossible to know. After all this, what matters? I'm going to say, I'm a machinist. I'm getting some answers. It all matters. The past is impossible to escape if it remains a blur. What SNARP did to you cannot be forgotten. You need a way of understanding all this before you can move on. Where are you? What is this place? What happened to the others? The questions outnumber the answers. You want to change that, but you'll have to learn to survive first. 
Dragos has left a few comforts in the container. The mylar blanket, the bedroll you slept on, a canister of water, a makeshift electric stove, and some faded sachets of some desiccated powder. You thumb the power stud of the stove and begin to boil the water. The contents of the sachets smells like damp wood, and you sprinkle them into the liquid. As the pungent snow washes over you, images from your restless sleep come back to you. A ring, like the station, but skeletal and ghostly. A web of threads pulling at your skin, a constellation of bright polygonal shapes, like angular suns burning into your mind. There's something unpleasantly visceral about these images, and it is long after you've finished drinking before they begin to fade. You tidy away the stove as best as you can, and try to gather enough energy to greet the day. There we go. So we have four dice here. Uh, all these dice uh, are able to be used on actions. This is our condition. That's how long we have in our artificial body. If we get to zero, we suffer a breakdown, and uh, things really don't go well when that happens. Energy is how we've eaten, and if we reach this low energy, then whenever it takes energy, it's actually going to take from condition. So you want to keep your energy up so that it doesn't take from condition. These are pretty good rolls. Not too bad. We got work to do. Dragos has stood in the corridor when you close up the container. He's still wearing his headset, and in the harsh light of the corridor, you realize it's implanted. A drone sits on his shoulder, its cache of sensor eyes rapidly irising. How are you feeling? Okay. The drone chirps. Good to hear. You notice that beneath the operator's rig, his skin is burned by or, or is marked by burns and blotches. I know the container isn't much, but it'll keep you safe. He pauses. So I'm not going to chit-chat too long. Are you well enough to work? Sure. All right then. He nods. At the yard, it's simple stuff. We hack these old hulls down, sell them off to the shipyards or the bright market dealers for cryo. Occasionally, we pull out some tech, something with a bit more value, but most of what comes in is scrap. It's hard to find good hands here, but I figure as a sleeper, you'll be used to the manual labor. And obviously, I'll slip you a few chits of commission based on what you turn up. Got it. Chits is money. He shuffles his feet nervously. Look, I wouldn't usually do this. In my opinion, you'd be best suited moving on as quick as you can and sleep as well. He trails off. Oh, man. Things being away the earth for me to yearn, he pauses. I need to help. Happy to. Okay. He pauses, thinking of something else to add. Look, just come down to the yard when you're feeling fresher. There's plenty to do. Will do. He nods distractedly and turns and walks away, the drone hopping along ahead of him. See you later, he calls back. Looks like it's time to get to work. Okay, let's see what we can actually do. So this is the whole ship. It actually, no, it's not the whole ship. It doesn't let us see all of it, does it? No, that is everything. Is that everything? No, that's definitely not everything. We haven't passed the gate. Okay, so there's more past this gate. Uh, let's see how much we need to get past this. It's probably a fee. 60 cryo. Whew. It's pretty expensive. Okay. All right, so we got our work. We got our work cut out for us here. We got a lot to do. We got a lot to do. Okay, so these are the odds. It's based off of how high your rolls are, is how high your percentage chance is. You can make it so that everything is either risky or not risky, or causes harm or doesn't cause harm. Um, these are the clocks that you have to fill up. If these clocks fill up and if they have a negative sign in them, then something bad happens. If you fill up this positive clock before this one fills up, then you make sure that this clock doesn't, doesn't matter. Nothing bad happens. What's great is that we have a plus one here. That's fantastic news, because that means we've got a couple of guarantees here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take the guaranteed six here. And that's going to work. While that's doing that, we're going to go ahead and do this one. That's a pretty good chance. It's a pretty good chance. 50-50 uh, uh, with a 50 being neutral is a pretty good chance that we'll get something good here. Find a doctor, can I? Okay. I didn't know they were ready yet. So in the top left, you're going to get your drives. These are things that will highlight. You can, like, autofocus your mission or whatever and focus on what you want to do. Um, but I didn't realize we could do that already. Sure enough. Okay, so we got to go get to know some people in the rotunda. we got to brush some elbows. We're gonna do some exploration. We gotta get to know some people. Not good. Okay, that was probably the worst case scenario. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, good, we did get access to the bar, so that's good. So at least we'll be able to eat something. And we probably should. Sure. 
grab a drink. Maybe that'll give us some energy. Give us one energy. And let's do this. We got plenty of energy, so at least we won't lose too much tomorrow. We gotta find a doctor, get our condition up soon and very soon. Shipyard's also available. Still plus one. But we have no more dice, so there's nothing else we can do today. We need to find a doctor first and foremost so we can get our uh, get our dosage up. Because if we don't have condition, we only get as many dice as line up with our condition. So you'll see tomorrow, or today maybe even, we're only going to get three dice because our condition's right there. We might get four, but I doubt it. This time you don't wake up. Instead, the ghost of the station, that shifting skeletal ring, surrounds you. For a moment, you're gone, absent from your own body, stretched out across a colorless void. Then the connections begin to establish themselves, threads tugging on the edge of your mind. These threads become vectors of exchange and extensions as you feel your thoughts slipping away from them, dissolving into the millions of distributed nodes they connect you to. You see the station. No, you feel the station like a web of texture in a smooth black liquid. You find a point in the station and you connect to it, pulse through it, follow loops and paths under and around it. You touch more points than you have fingers and then you try in a moment of impulsiveness to connect them. The flow passes through you so rapidly that you feel yourself being carried with it, splitting and separating, eddying and gathering. As you do, things occur to you, things that you can't possibly know. You reach out, try to grasp them, try to touch them. You notice a tugging feeling pulling at you insistently, as if it were a small child. Somehow it's pulling in two directions at once. You look down. All of a sudden, everything shuts off. You come back trembling into this unfamiliar body, both yours and not yours, all at once. You find yourself standing in the container, eyes now open to the dark steel walls. You feel a change within you, a shift. You close your eyes for a second. You feel it waiting there, the station, splayed out across your mind. The storm of connective knowns waiting to be explored. And then it's gone. Yeah, only three today. Man, that's a bummer. Man, that is a big old bummer. Okay. What's up, Frostbite? How we doing, Luke? How's your Wednesday treating you? So you may remember if you checked out uh, Game Passer Play with Justin a few months ago, he played this game, and uh, now I'm playing it and I'm real into it. I'm real into it. I'm deep in this game. And I got to find a doctor because if, a do if I don't find a doctor, I'm not going to get dice, so there's no point in doing anything else until I find a doctor, really. We're going to take the slow method. We got to find ourselves a doctor. Yes, that's great. That's fantastic news. Yes, already right, found Sabine. So Sabine is the doctor. They're gonna help us out. We're in luck, dude. Next comes from the comes the call from the enforcer at the door. Had a great stream this AM, then took a two hour nap, been nursing a crazy headache all day. Oh yeah, you were feeling pretty cruddy yesterday. Did that get even worse today? I hate to hear that, man. You shuffled down the flickering hallway towards the open apartment door. You keep your head down and your shoulders high in the queue, trying not to bring attention to yourself. So the basic gist is that we have had our consciousness put into a, like, a machine, and it's trying to separate because we ran away from the people that did that for us because they were treating us like slave labor. And so now we are disconnecting from our body. Our body is rejecting our psyche. We've got to find a doctor that's going to help us. You were thankful for the tip-off that a doctor was operating out of this place, but now that you're here, you aren't so sure. The gang enforcer on the door, the flickering light strips, the decaying hab block, they have all made a long queue a test of your nerve. But your options are few. Without a supply of stabilizer, this body, your body, will... You suppress a shiver and shuffle toward the front of the queue. You try to find, your, find something to distract yourself. Uh, let's look inside. You lean against the doorframe and look into the apartment. The entryway is dark, punctuated by green indicators of stacks of sealed containers. You lean in and see amber light filtering through a far doorway, screened with plastic sheeting beyond which blurred shapes move. The slap of the enforcer's palm against the doorway jerks you awake. Wait your turn, he growls. Yeah, not much improvement since yesterday. Oh no! If it makes you feel any better, it feels like everybody's sick right now. My daughter is also sick and not doing good. We've got her, and she's six months old. So it's like, what can you do with a six-month-old? So we gave her some agave, because she can't have honey. Uh, and gave her like an agave mixture, and that seems to be helping, but man, it, it's rough. It's rough. Crud is going around. Uh, after a few moments, a figure pushes through the doorway, and you can catch a distant voice. Send in the next, or send in the next one, Toshiro. The enforcer jerks his head, and you slip inside, passing through the dark entryway and pushing through the plastic sheeting on the far door. The room beyond is bathed in warm light. A floor to ceiling transparent panel gives a full view of the bright market sealed roof and the buzzing traffic above. And for a moment, you're transfixed by the motion. Come, sit. 
calls a sharp voice, and you see a silhouetted figure turned away, replacing the plastic sheeting over the frame of a simple folding bed. You make your way across the room. The figure turns, and as they do, you see an expression of confusion flash across their features. They open their mouth as if to speak. They blink, and then quickly regain their composure. Aside from all the reading, Luke, I think that you would dig this game because of the fact that it really feels like a board game. It feels like a single-player board game, especially with the uh, roll, roll to win or whatever. Roll to play. It feels, it feels like a board game the whole time. What's up, Harry? I'm showing Citizen Sleeper because I can't stop thinking about it. So I wanted to show people. So... They suggest is, we are a robot the, with a consciousness fused to us. We ran away from the people that were treating us like slave labor. And uh, now we've escaped to the, 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 this magic ship in the sky, in, this, in space. And it's rough and tumble. It's Night City-esque. It's dark. It's, uh, you know, uh, what's the name of the movies? Blade Runner-esque. And we're just trying to survive. And the way that we do that, can I play but you read everything for me? I mean, that's what's happening right now. So technically, we're at least getting it started here. I'm going to get you addicted with me reading it, and then you're going to want to play more. Uh, and the way that you play this game is through the use of the dice. And with each, like, number up, you get higher chances of things to be successful or to fail. And this up top, this top bar, is how good our psyche is connected to our body. And this bottom bar is how, like, good our energy level is. Pastor reads Congregation of Bedtime Story of the Game. All right, please sit. They gesture to the bed, then turn to an open case of tools on the table. You sit. Sabine turns, a compact diagnostic scanner of some kind in their hand. They hold it to their eye. Remain still, please. Their tone is clipped and businesslike. You stare ahead, still dazed from their expression when you first enter. Fear, recognition, sadness, unmistakably etched across their face. I love Sabine's design so much. I love the see-through cloak. It's so cool looking. Love everything about it. How long have you been on the station? They ask, a scanner still to their eye. Literally a day. I've been here a day. I just know how to play the game, and so I did better than I'm supposed to. They nod. It's good you came to me. They set the diagnostic scanner on the table. I'm going to start by assuming you don't know anything. They take your arm and roll up your sleeve, inspecting your synthetic skin. I know all of it. I know all of it, unfortunately. Your body is dying. They say it without ceremony, without drama, but not without empathy. SNARP doesn't like to lose its proprietary technology let loose. To prevent bodies like yours, frames as they call them, from being stolen, repurposed, or in your case, escaping, they built in a process of so-called planned obsolescence. Frames decay rapidly when they regularly, uh, when not regularly injected with stabilizer, one of SNARP's remain, uh, one which SNARP remains the sole producer of. They look up. Sound familiar? Yeah. Good. That may help. They swap to your other arm, running some thin metal device over your skin. You feel your forearm tremble. I'm sorry, Sabine says, and you're unsure if they mean for the cold touch of the metal or everything else. Emulations like you, sleepers, as most people know you, aren't classified as people in any of the surrogate systems. You have no rights, no status. They focus hard on the inspection of your arm, and SNARP has no reason to release stabilizer into the market. Sabine looks up as if to apologize again, and they stop themselves. I know little of this is of use to you. They turn away, disassembling the metal instrument and cleaning it. Silence fills the room as Sabine works, and then the silence gives way to tension. You stare at their back, willing them to say something, anything. Sabine turns to face you. I may be able to help. They sigh, and you see the darkness under their eyes, hear the fatigue in their voice. They gesture to the door. You saw Toshiro outside? You nod. He works for my benefactor, Yadigan. They are influential in the low end. They give me the space to work, run the door, and take the profits. At the same time, I have to fix up their enforcers, tend to their implants, sew up their wounds. They look away. But Yadigan has connections. Smugglers from the Starward Belt. Mercenaries working for corporations on Ember. If they can source the stabilizer, maybe you'll have a better chance. Sabine sets down their slate, their notes complete. This, this is dangerous, and it'll be expensive, but I think we can do it. Thank you. Sabine walks away to the window, their face dappled by the shadows of passing drones. Let's just see if this works first. I'll let you know when I have a lead. You nod and leave, Sabine still staring out, unmoving. When you reach the lower level of the market, you look back up through the panels of the roof to see if you can see their face, but the room looks dark against the lights of the market. You duck your head and walk off into the crowd. So what I love about this is that it feels like the old school days of, um, of like, life sims. It feels like a Newgrounds life sim for, for, uh, for grown-ups. For the grown-ups. Okay, none of this is going to be of use to me yet. She's not going to be quite of use yet. i got to wait three days. Um, I love Emphis so much. He's my favorite character in the whole game. I'm a big fan of him. Love everything about him. 
Emphis is busy, his broad face uplit by the makeshift gas burner in front of him. With precise, delicate movements, he lays thick chunks of marinated fungus into a dented wok, his other hand idly tossing a metal bowl of sliced vegetables and some red flecked dressing. The smell is incredible. By the way, I hate mushrooms, and this whole game is about eating mushrooms, and it is so disgusting to me the entire time. So... Do you like mushrooms? Anybody out there? Are we any mushroom eaters out there that can like this food for me? Because I don't like it. You watch as he fulfills a set of orders, heaping the fungus with the bright salad and depositing it in plastic trays. A stack of chits rattles in his apron pocket as customers file past the burner, handing over payment. I'm going to watch and appreciate him. Despite the cue, Emphis doesn't rush. He, dress, he dresses each portion individually, squeezing precise slugs of liquid from an assortment of bottles into the bowl of torn leaves and bright slices before tossing them loosely together. No to shrimps, I so agree. Occasionally, a waiting customer might mutter something about efficiency, but Emphis remains steady, and remains steady in his process. After a while, the queue fades back into the crowd, and Emphis sets down his metal bowl and looks up across the burner to see you watching him. I could feel your eyes burning a hole in my bowl. For example? Yeah, of course. Come on over. He gestures neatly. The smell is almost unbearably strong as he cooks. The earthiness of the fungus, laced with something so spicy, the smoke makes your eyes water. The heat from the burner is like a bonfire, and your skin hardens in its glare. I know you. You sleepers. Emphis says while he cooks, his voice deep but clear. A hard life. A lot of stories. He glances up from beneath his cap with piercing eyes. I know. Tell him a story? Yeah. You begin to tell him about your journey to the eye, and he nods as he, as he cooks, his eyes never leaving his work. You tell him of the confusion, the pain, but also the sense of possibility and its sudden arrival. You tell him of the cold and dark of the container, and the endless cycles spent within it. Now it seems, you tell him, like some dream that you once had but can never forget. You tell him that the eye excites you and scares you, but you're unsure to where to walk, where to look, what to do. Eventually you tail off, running out of words. He places a plastic tray of steaming fungus in your hand. Next time we can talk some more. He smiles, but next time, you pay. He slams a heavy hand against a button on the burner's side and shuts it off. The roar of the flame and its impressive heat fades. Next time, then, sleeper. He waves you away and begins to oil the walk. Before you can turn back to the alley, you notice the geometric patterns of circular scars across his forearms, each surrounded by a constellation of glinting pin marks. Gonna lurk to eat some dinner, enjoy some dinner, hopefully no mushrooms for you, Frost. You walk away, and you, as you do, you take a bite of the rich, spicy, delicately sweet fungus. Your taste sensors light up like a fusion reactor. You'll be back. Yay! Full dinner! All right, now I guess we should make some money. We only got three. Should probably make some money. Yeah. Let us make some money! Oh, there is a little chance of negative here. Come on. Yeah! Nice. 15 cryos. Great. All right, we're going to take a nap. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Time for tomorrow. We've got to wait a couple days at least for the medicine to be ready. Again, the skeletal ring of the station fills your mind. It sparkles with glittering lights like stars reflected in a winter lake. It is clearer or crisper than before. The threads still pull, but you remain in place, flickering in the flow. Between the threads, you see bright shapes, cachets of shimmering light beneath transparent crystal forms. You follow the path of a thread across the ring, through these forms, then leap off into the void. You begin to understand. These are nodes and connections, a map of information, of communication. There are so many layers, so many loops that it seems almost impossible to parse. But you begin to try. Book some threads. There are more threads than you can count. You choose one that passes nearby and approach it. As you inspect it, you understand why you instinctively chose the word thread when you first saw them. They're not single lines, but rough, fuzzy things woven from data strings of all kinds. The threads and nodes, passages and puzzle boxes, one leads to another. There's so much here, so many answers, so many questions. All you need to do is follow the paths and open the boxes. You look out across the ghost landscape of exchange and see an opportunity. But then, that insistent tugging again, pulling at you. You look down again and see two lines, two threads, pulling in different directions as if they were tied around you first. The first thread leads out, away from the station, into the inky black. Someone out there is tracking you, hunting you, following the thread to you. They're in a ship, and the ship is approaching ever closer with each cycle. The second. The second thread leads in, pulling deep into the station. Your, ga you gaze, uh, your gaze follows it, and this time you see something, a sphere shimmering above a strange, angular body. A pulse shoots out from it, passing over you like a torch beam, testing you, tasting you. You open your eyes. Time is short. 
All right, we have 10 days. We're being hunted. What's up, Stained? So now we can access the cloud. Literally, it is the cloud. This is the best way to get rid of small dice, like the ones and the twos. So when you click on that, it's going to take you into a, like, digital world. And whenever you go into the digital world, you can access keynotes and agents. Uh, right now, it looks like, yeah, there's an agent. So, like, agents will get you money. So that's the, a good place to get some actions here because they, they're pretty cheap, typically. But the nodes are going to unlock missions and stuff, so you also want to kind of focus on those. Uh, but they're a great way to spend your very initial your very initial uh, parts. It kind of feels like Eleven accessing the uh, Upside Down. What's up, Sneaky and Stain? How we doing? How are your nights going? Okay. So we got to wait on Sabine. We can go check on Emphis. Yeah. I'm probably going to have I'm probably gonna have some of his food soon. Although I only need two, and that's really not enough. Maybe if I lose some energy, I'll go to him. Um, but we got we to gotta get some money. We got to get money. Big money, big money. And I really want Dragos to actually be my friend. I let I let Dragos, I let Dragos's clock run out in, the fir in my first game. Ooh, we got a scrap item. That's very good. Just finished another chapter on a Plague Tale. Needed a break. I'm gonna play that game eventually. I'm gonna play the first one eventually. I promise. 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 I don't know when, but eventually. I guess I should buy a drink. That'll give me a small amount of energy. And then tomorrow I'll do the big one. Let's see. Yeah, I don't really need any of this yet. Not worth taking the risk anyway. Okay, well let's go let's go waste some of these, huh? Are we not doing group play tonight? We didn't have a game and nobody was around to play. But if we have a game that people want to play, let me know and I'll hop into something. But I figured since we had the spare time, I would just, uh, I would play a game that I've been harping on for so long so that I could show you guys it and hopefully convince someone, anyone to play this game. Oh yes, nice, okay, cool. Uh, as you drift back from the node, something latches onto you. A thread strung tight around you, it tethers you in place. A taste. The voice makes you shiver. Its source somehow both distant and close behind your ear. You see a distant glint of light shut off, and then suddenly a shape is at your side. It stalks around you, circling like a shark, like a wolf. Entity, unknown, astringent, processing. Uh, stay very still. Please, old... The thread around you thickens until it is a ring, a cylinder, a tunnel of light circled around you. It is blinding for a moment, and then it is gone. As it fades, you see a figure, a creature, in front of you. Its strange head flickers between different angles, reading you. What are you? The shape paces around you on little legs, or life legs. <laughs> I'm wondering if I'm going to be able to test out this new monitor tonight. What are you thinking about playing? Are you excited about it? Entity, identify, origin, serial, cadence. The figure faces you expectantly. Stays out. Reviewsal. The figure's strange head rotates. Brackish signature of and not of. Attempting interface. As the figure speaks, more threads begin to spiral from its head. Thick, snaking, vine-like ribbons that flex and wave. They approach with intent. Run! You kick off and glide away from the cloud. The threads surging like a predatory tentacle. They follow, wrapping the space around you until you are held within a web. A tentacle, or a tangle of tentacles closing in. Stop! Hunter halts its threads, its head twitching. Entity, your identity is unknown. We only seek to correct illegalities. Can you confirm your legal right to sentience? I'm a person. Incorrect, you are an entity. All at once, Hunter's head is directly in front of yours, blocking your vision. You stink of their taste, the one from the sealed dock. Hunter shimmers with fury. I will find access, I will interface. Sealed dock. An entity hides in the rotunda. You are its puppet. Hunter extends a razor-edged thread. I will not be diverted from my task glows with murderous intent. Strike! Bang. You lash out with all your force. Not a physical strike, but a, a focusing. A spike of interference, leaping out like the tip of a spear. Yeah, it's a big upgrade, good budget monitor, Dell Curve gaming monitor, 27-inch monitor with 165 hertz refresh rate, QHD display black. Very nice! That's like, uh, I have a Samsung that's almost the exact same. Hunter stumbles, shifts, separates. Wake up. You open your eyes, blinking back the station light, shaking with fear. 
back to the real world. Now I'm beginning now. Nine. We need all the money we can get to be able to afford medicine. As you close up, a voice echoes from the corridor towards you. Hey, sleeper, wait up! Turn. Fang is coming toward, uh, down the corridor towards you, a wonky grin on his broad face. Hey, hey, glad I caught you. Do I know you? He grins. You do now. He puts a hand on your arm. I've seen you hanging around. Just want to chat. You staying in that thing? He nods back to the container, shaking his head. Rough. It can be hard to get a start on the eye. He looks away down the passage. What was it old Erlen said? The eye opens for us all. Nice idea, but well, not always very practical. He glances back at you. We do our best, but it isn't easy. Erlen? He passed together into the main hallway. No one has told you about Erlen? <laughs> He's the founder of this place. That's why it bears his name. Avenant should organize some seminars. He laughs. Not really my department, though. I'm with systems. Avenant? Think of us as an administrative association for the eye. Depending on who you talk to, we either emerge as a response to or a continuation of Andre Erlen's original union. He smiles. Personally, I avoid the topic. He stops you in the quiet passage. Look, that's not what I'm here to discuss. I've been seeing some unusual network activity, and, well, I know a little about you sleepers. I have a small proposition for you. He glances around, but this is not the place for it. I have an office just across the way. Give me a cycle or two to prepare. Then, when you're settled, stop by. He lowers his voice and gives you a dark look. In truth, I need you. If what you say is true about you sleepers, well, there's work to be done. Sorry I had to AFK. In-laws were still here and wanted to say bye. You're all good, of course. Uh, likely continue on with Gotham Knights, which I have to say is losing its shine. I thought the Harley, Harley Quinn fight was fun, though. Stained, I have played exactly an hour of that game, and I haven't continued. Maybe. Maybe I'll eventually get back into it. He pats you on the back, his voice bright, and his uh, dark look suddenly gone. Stay clean, sleeper. He walks off down the passage, raising hand in farewell. We have a six, a five, and a three. That's really, really good. We're going to go ahead and finish up this. Uh, we'll waste our five here. 100% positive. ka -chow. We're done. All right, Dragos. You arrive into a buzz of activity at the yard. Red blinking lights flash across a vast dark shape suspended below the dome. They flicker across scorched hull plates and vent structures, spilling from holes in the twisted shape. The cutter is huge and has been torn apart in some violent encounter. She's a beauty, isn't she? Drago stands to the side, focused on the hulking ship as it lowered into the yard. She is. Oh, should thank you. This place was on its last legs when you turned up. And now look at this. The ship descends slowly, its interior visible through multiple hull breaches. You struggle to gather the same enthusiasm as Drago's for this monstrous craft. You can't help but think of what became of its crew. Stay silent. Believe it or not, I managed to convince our salvager friends to give it to me on credit. He glances at you. The ship creaks like a, ca a calving, calving, caving, caving iceberg as it reaches the base of the yard. Dragos is uh, visibly excited. I know I said uh, he shouldn't stick around, but I'm going to need some help with this one. The drones start to crawl over the hulk, their lights illuminating flashes of dented hull. Watching you, wonder, watching, you wonder if you arrived in a similar fashion, locked inside that container, the wreck of the SNR freighter, lowered into the yard like a corpse ready to be butchered. Or was a container delivered to Ragos on its own, a wound for your rebirth into this strange station? You shudder. Perhaps if you could learn something about this ship, you may be able to trace the path back to that le the path that led you to this yard. Drago squeezes your shoulder. After these polished cycles, I think we're up to it. What do you think? You see the fading name of the ship emblazoned on its side. Winter light. Let's do it. He claps you on the back. Glad to hear it. Come back in a few and we can make a start. A real beauty. Dragos repeats, perhaps to himself. You take one last look at the shattered ship as the drones start cutting, and then slip out of the yard, feeling suddenly cold in the empty passage. Yay! We got an upgrade point. All right, so whenever you complete a drive, you get an upgrade point, and upgrade points allow you to get new benefits. And I want to see if they're the same as they are in my game. Yes, everything is the same. So the first thing I think I'm probably going to do, I'm going to use my upgrade point, and I'm probably going to buy my negative one away. Because the negative one is very irritating for the entire game, but I could also really be fine with just about any of these. That might be what I wait for. Maybe I'll wait for another upgrade point and do that. That'd be really nice. 
nice. That's a, that's a super, super good upgrade to have this early on. That's going to save me a ton of money. Yeah, we'll wait. We'll wait. We don't need anything right now. Okay, Sabine's going to be ready tomorrow. Emphasis, we can't do anything from him. Word exchange, we could try and... We could definitely win with that one. Uh, Overlook bar. I think we'll get something if we buy one more drink. We can't see it? Oh, you guys can't see it. That's very funny. Um, I'll go back to it just a second. Basically, it allows you to use scrap items to improve your condition rather than stabilizer. Which just saves you a ton of money because stabilizer ends up being 100, 100 cryo. The glass shatters on the steel bar beside you and the taunts don't take long to follow. Hey, aw! The spacer calls across the low room. What are you doing here? He laughs at his own lame joke. Playing human? Uh, is the game in, uh, is the time in the game real time or game time? Game time. So you have all the dice that you roll that day, and then whenever you're out of dice, you're out of dice, and you have to run a new cycle. So a new day starts over as soon as your dice run out. It's very similar to a board game. Or a life sim. Um, I'm gonna ignore him. You hunch a little far, uh, further, staring at the hundreds of tiny impact points that scar the bar's surface. A hand falls on your shoulder, but as you flinch away, it passes reassuringly. You freeze in place. Out. The voice comes from behind you, spat out like a shot. You turn to see bright eyes, dark hair, a stare that could breach the wall and vent you out all into hard vacuum. As you turn back to the spacer, the second glass comes sailing through the air. Uh, I'm gonna duck. You duck, and the glass explodes on the bar behind you, showering you in glittering shards. Through the haze of glass and girol vapor, I think that's girol. I don't know, because I don't know mushrooms. Again. Don't know mushrooms, don't like mushrooms, don't know how to pronounce mushroom names. You see Tala leap the bar and close the distance to the spacer. The thud as he slams into the wall echoes around the bar like thunder. Now flanked by the other figures, quick to their feet, Tala throws the spacer out against the door and stands silhouetted against the rotunda lights. You touch your forehead and it feels wet. Someone helps you to your feet and back onto your stool. Broken glass rattles as it is cleared and a fresh measure of girl is glugged out in front of you. That same hand, warm, heavy, falls on your shoulder once more. He isn't coming back. We don't tolerate that kind of mess around here. Tala flops onto the stool beside you. Let's get a look at you. Tala wipes the powdered glass from around the wound, and someone takes a or someone places a bottle of alcohol and a metal tin with tweezers on the bar. She disinfects them and then turns to you. You were pretty fast on that second glass, she smiles, picking a piece of glass from your forehead. But not fast enough. You don't feel pain. Only the string of status messages your body delivers concerning dermal damage and exposed structures. You do feel care, though, and Tala's bright eyes search your thick synthetic skin for blinders. Um, I'm gonna watch her. Gotta run, might be back later. All good, Stained! Hope you're able to join us. Enjoy your new monitor, have fun. Tala works with the skill of someone who has had to pick glass splinters from the skin of a stranger before. She hones in on each bright shard, all the time tapping the tweezer tips with little rhythms that only she can follow. Tala smiles to herself. So, you been on the eye long? Well, um, just arrived. I thought so. I've only seen you here a couple of times. A splinter clicks into the tin. Not everyone is like that, idiot. We don't all hate you. She glances around. Some of the regulars, maybe. They fear you. Maybe they're just curious. According to the internet, it's grounds G-Roll. G-Roll! I don't know. But I do know that the Overlook is a safe place. Or Z-Roll? Zero! It is all zero! The zero machine! Uh huh! Machine! Zero! 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 G roll. I like G roll. <laughs> the cultural appropriation of the zero feels a little much. I know what it's like to be new in this place, trust me. She meets your eye. I'm not trying to convince you of anything or separate you from your chits. I just want you to know that if you need somewhere, you can always come here. I know the rations we've got aren't much, and the company is, she leans in, limited. But if you need work, I'll happily put you behind the bar. And if you need shelter, well, we can discuss that. We're like, there's here are two valid pronunciation, and Nate's like, Jirol. Jirol? Oh, it's J. Did you want like a like a more pronounced like J? Jirol. Jirol. He'll be safe. I usually have Francis on the door, but he's up in the Greenway this cycle, haggling with our supplier. Francis tends to be the particular about what we serve, even if the clientele isn't. 
She places her tweezers in the tin with clink. Anglicizing the heck out of it, 100%. That's you, sleeper. Here. She slides a glass of Girol to you. This'll help. She stops, her hand's still on the glass. Wait, does this help? I mean, can you get drunk? Must be that southern accent that I don't have. Let's find out! Yo! She laughs. Just don't sit here too long. I'd hate to see you become a real regular. She walks back around the bar, gathering the glasses as she does, and before long is retelling how she threw that spacer out to a new group that just wandered in, complete with dramatic actions. She gestures in your direction, and you instinctively look away, back to the worn surface of the bar. You take a sip of the Girol. The earthly fungal tones fill your senses, almost blocking out sight and sound like diving headfirst into a bog. You may not be able to get drunk, but this connection to something grown, something fermented, something old, feels good. Yay! All right, we got a six and a three. We ought to go in. We ought to make some money. We ought to go make some money, or we can start our shipyard journey. Nah, nah, we're going to make some journey. Some money. Money, 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 money! Money! Yeah! Yeah, ciao! Cryo, baby. Not worth the risk for the three. We're not going to risk it again for biscuit. Just the one risk is fine. And then maybe, oh, nope, minus one. Oof. Oof, minus one. Oh, no. He doesn't have anything for me yet, does he? Oh, he does. Oh, well, perfect. Oh, perfect. Um, this one says it's safe. We'll go with it. Worst case scenario, I just lose energy, probably. Nice! Dope! Look at us! Alright, and tomorrow we get to learn more about Sabine! Nice. So each time we sleep, we lose uh, two energy and one condition. Oh, Fang again. What's up, Fang? Sleeper. Fang catches your attention as you approach the Havenage building, leaning against a bay door to the side of the entrance. You approach. Easier to come in this way. Security, all that. He gives you a look. You know. He slams a button and the bay creaks open. Blinking lights in the dark behind it. You follow Fang inside. Truth be told, I don't spend much time upstairs. This is where I work. The door hisses as it closes behind you. The bay is filled with pieces of hardware, all rigged up to generators and diagnostic slates and things you don't recognize that glow with blue screen light. There's a chorus of hums that blends into a single wave of static, filling the dark corners of the room. Fang leans on a server stack and gestures around you. You like it? It's incredible. Server room. He smiles widely. I thought you'd say that. He taps a nearby server stack, which bleeps in response. This is my treasure trove, all dredged up from the sea of systems we call the eye. You wouldn't believe what this place runs on. He steps over to a towering block speckled with vents. Some of these systems are from the original station, A1, the one Solheim built. Oh, he's saying, some of these systems are built from the original station, A1, the one Solheim built. We've had to invent new components, repair things we never built, reverse engineer entire subsystems into existence. Residents here look up at the eye and think they're seeing a constant, a concrete reality. But this place is a system in constant flux, decaying and growing, collapsing into new configurations. He walks down between the hardware stacks and you follow. We're keeping this place alive, but also remaking it into something new, dragging it away from those corporate origins. He stops. At least that's what I'm trying to do. He turns back to face you among the flickering machines, humming all around you. I know you can see this too, sleeper. All these systems and sections, you can, can't you? I can see it. It makes sense, right? You're between here and there, between the people and their systems. You light this place up like a beacon. That's what I need. You glance at the lights around you, and as you do, they seem to flicker, to realign, to follow your gaze. Thing notices it too. I'm guessing being a beacon isn't always ideal when you're on the run, though. They're tracking me. He pats you on the shoulder. Maybe I can help you with that. There's a lot of old growth in this place, subsystems I can't see, access protocols lost to time and decay, secrets, a mess of secrets. With your help, I can unlock this place, break off those last ghost limbs of corporate control. He lowers his voice below the hum. Even in Havenage, there's old growth, those whose roots trace back into those bad old days. You help me dredge up the pass? I'll see what I can do about that tracker of yours. He winks. What do you say, sleeper? Uh, I'll think about it. He looks away. Okay, you think about it. Thing passes you a uh, ragged-looking metal tab. A gift. He, he smiles. It's a Solheim cipher. 
I dug it up from the depths of the station. Slot that into an old network gate, you'll be able to pull out all kinds of secrets from the nodes inside. He walks you back to the front of the bay. So, if you come across anything while you're thinking, maybe bring it in. I have an acquisitions budget, and I'm not afraid to use it. He slams the door button again. Think on it, sleeper, and I'll see you soon. You step, blinking, back out of the passage, those flickering lights still in the back of your mind. Nice! Now we have a new place we'll be able to deliver data whenever we have it. Uh, but first we gotta go talk to Sabi- Ooh! What do they have for me today? Scrap. See, that's very nice! I could go ahead and start investing in scrap, and then whenever I unlock that second upgrade, I'll be ahead of the curve. The first thing you see on entering is the glint of Toshiro's implants, like a cat's eyes in the dark of the corridor. He nods you in as you arrive at Sabine's door. The entryway is still dark. You push through the sheeting into the surgery. I have it. Sabine stands with the case open in front of them, a set of vials lined up inside, separated by foam inserts. They pick one up, rotating it in the warm light. I have no idea how Yadigan... Uh, they trail off. We should treat this with caution. It looks authentic, but I have no idea if it really is what it appears to be. So I'm the test case? That seems to be the case. Unfortunately, I'm not sure we have another choice. They gesture for you to sit on the bed. The stabilizer works under a similar principle to an immunosuppressant in a transplant am operation, in that it stops your body from ejecting the unfamiliar part of itself. In the case of your frame, the unfamiliar part is each of your biosynthetic organ groups, which over time are identified by your body as foreign material, and therefore must be eliminated. Sabine holds up the vial of the would-be stabilizer. However... Unlike an immunosuppressant, the stabilizer doesn't do this by limiting your entire immune system. Instead, it re-encodes your biosynthetic organs with new protein chains which act as, as passcodes within your immune system. The stabilizer refreshes these passcodes, keeping your frame from ejecting all of its own organs. Which means... Which means the stabilizer would be able to encode any organic or biosynthetic matter to be accepted by your immune system. They glance away. At least if the stabilizer is genuine. The only way to know for sure is to inject the vial. They begin readying, readying this syringe. I'll start with a small dose to limit the risk. Well, let's do it. Sabine cracks the glass neck of the stabilizer vial and uses a syringe to extract a fraction of the liquid. They tap the syringe and you watch as if any liquid might emerge from the, or any sign might emerge from the clear, clear liquid. You barely feel the needle, your frame registering the initial injection, but with little response. A sensation begins to spread through the, from the sight. A fizzing, trembling wave that disperses through your arm with incredible speed. Your vision goes white. And when it returns, Sabine appears encased in shards of sparkling light that slowly fade into darkness as you settle back against the bed. You swim in darkness, muffled noises like an argument heard from underwater, prickling waves of cold. When you sit back up, Sabine is sitting in a chair by the window, facing away from you, backlit by the glow of their slate. Awake? Yes. The stabilizer is genuine. They sit down beside the bed. I don't know how Yadigan acquired a case of this stuff, but they did. Sabine looks troubled, distracted. You should rest some more, but you're going to have to do that somewhere else. They gesture to the door. I have other patients. Sorry. Sabine nods towards the case. I'm afraid I can't offer you any more doses. You're going to need to pay for your next dose. Silence fills the room. They return to their glowing slate. Looking around the room, it seems different somehow, as if things have moved or shifted. You wonder how long you've been out. Sabine? Nothing comes free, sleeper. Remember that. You manage to get to your feet and wander out into the hallway. The queue stretches down the flickering corridor. Toshiro stands impatiently by the door and fixes you with a glare as you leave. You lower your eyes as you stumble past, somehow faintly aware of the station spinning beneath you. I love it! Yep, so there we go. Stabilizer is one hundo. One hundo! That's some expensive mess right there. We got work to do. The good news is, is that we have two fours. That's pretty good. We're going to start working on clearance. Because tomorrow we're going to have five dice. And that's so many more options. I don't know if I want to start working with Thing yet or not. I probably should. I probably should. Because another thing that I didn't do in my playthrough is, uh... I did not manage to uh, get my tracker. 
turned off in time. I won't tell you what happens if you do that. I'll just tell you that I did it. Like if I were to make a tutorial for the game, that, that would have probably been where it would have ended. If you aren't into this game from the writing and from the sim elements and from everything they've showed us so far, you probably won't be into this game. Because that's abs this you are experiencing the game. I want to know what Dragos does. Dragos. done right here. The final pieces of the winter light sit in neat piles waiting for the collection shuttle from Havenage. Dragos has managed to sell the remaining pieces to the shipyards, a fact that's hard to forget as he's been telling you about it for the past two cycles, and all that remains is for Havenage to come collect. You look around at the yard, transformed from when you first arrived. The mostly repaired drones flip back and forth, no longer buzzing unevenly or lost in dark corners. The scrap is sectioned, sorted, the system that you and Dragos have put into place over the past cycle is paying off. As you look, you notice the glow of pale light from the office by the entrance, that rundown cab of a building which houses all the records and spare equipment. Dragos must be inside, and you get to your feet and walk over to find out when the shipyard collection crew will be here. Knock. Sleeper, come in. You swing open the door and walk in. Dragos is sitting at the small metal desk. The shipyards told me they'd be here soon, but they'll, then they'll hand over the chits and we're set. He writes something with a stylus on his slate, then shuts it off. Of course, we should talk about a bonus. He stands and turns to face you, his face placid. Look, I don't know when the next job is coming in, but this should tide you over for now. He opens his hand to reveal a stack of chits. What's going on here? I said it's a bonus, take it. Dragos presses the chits into your hand. I've done well by you. You've returned a favor. He straightens up and clears his throat, and you realize he's prepared for what he's about to say. No! No! No, I wanted to do the other one too! Oh no! I wonder if it's saved. Last save was 121 seconds ago. Maybe I haven't... Oh no! I really hope I can do it. I didn't know. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, I'm going to do this first. Because I want to know what the secret is. I accidentally did something that I shouldn't have done. But this time we're going to learn the secret. Because I want to know what this, this does. Oh no, he gave me yard clearance. Don't do that. Okay. We're learning. We're learning. Do I have two upgrades? Just one. I wonder how much he would have given me. I don't care to find out. I'm so unsure of what to do. Let's just keep unlocking things. The hunter is close to finding us, but we should be okay. The reason you want to do this stuff is eventually you're going to be able to sell these. These are like um, private information, and you're able to access them and eventually sell them. They're very nice to have. Like game. Sleepy time. 
Oopsie doopsie, I probably should have given that guy the thing. Uh oh. Ooh, look at those rolls. Look at that gorgeous rolls. Are you kidding me? Let's give Fing his thing. Let's give Fing his thing. Oh, I need three of them? Oops. So I might not be able to do that until I unlock this. What was it? 60 cryo? I can do that. But I got a brush elbow, so... Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Let's finish up this first. I want to know what this guy's hiding from. Yes, the Seeky Secrets! I've never seen this before. Squeeze into the office at the entrance to the yard, you lay out everything you have on your winter light across the metal desk. Your makeshift forensic notes glow on Dragos' old writing slate, overlapping lines and scrawling annotations. A set of drone scans fill the small terminal with a spectrum of colors. A heat map of damage and decay, a crumpled printout from the office's ship registry lies beside them. Synthetic paper so thin it's almost transparent. Good monitor. Reactor failure. That's the verdict that anyone would have returned after a cursory glance at these stacked heat maps of the remains of the winter light. On the terminal screen, the ship is shown in section, blotches of color marking the approximate damage the ship sustained. Dominating the view is a single blood-red rose radiating from the ship's fraction drive. A simple story, a catastrophic failure of the drive core, leading to a fatal hull breach, a well-documented failure likely brought on by wear or misuse. But you aren't looking at the rows of the reactor. You're looking at a smaller, paler mark, one that might be easy to miss at first glance, a thumbprint size, and delicately placed over the control servos for the ship's main external airlock. It suggested a controlled, shaped explosion, one designed to punch through the hole and allow access to the airlock from the outside. You're looking at it because it's troubling you. It's late. Your attempts at a reconstruction of the winter light before its fatal accident consists of a series of overlapping sketches and diagrams, showing possible layouts and configurations of the gutted cutter. There was no off-the-shelf model, it was heavily modified, parts replaced with inventive configurations, the new retrofitted into the old handmade joints of reconditioned filters. This was someone's pride and joy, a lifetime project kept running with care and intuition. It also contained a set of hidden compartments. You missed them at first, where the hull had been thickened, the corners rounded to disguise the change. But they're there. Look at the printout. A plain list shows the registration history of the winter light, the gaps between the entries tantalizingly opaque. Its, its first registration was a couple of thousand cycles ago on this very station, logged at the central hub. From here, the registry tells the story of a busy ship, one that rarely stayed on station for more than a few cycles, and often took up on voyages that kept it away from the eye for up to a hundred cycles. The winter light got a little rest. As o an old ship, at many cycles under its belt, carefully maintained, a reactor failure preceded by a carefully concealed external entry. A suite of hidden compartments tucked away. This was the winter light, and this was its story. But that's not the full story, because there's something else. It's a little more than a list, a tiny chunk of data you were able to pull from the ship's systems. The main systems were fried, of course, but the winter light had a separate system, one tucked away in one of its hidden compartments, armored, airwalled. The list, the only recoverable piece from the whole system, is a partial inventory. It details the contents of its hidden compartments. Some of it you recognize, some of it you don't. Shipmind ROM, Shimmer, Cryo Chain Codes, and then the final entity, Passenger, parentheses, Sleeper. You stare at the list on the terminal and try not to think about what it was like arriving here. In the cold for so long, half frozen in the freight container. Had this sleeper been smarter? Luckier? How would they convince the Winter Light a smuggler's ship, if you ever saw one, to extract them from SNR? Luckier, you laugh. There'd been no remains found in any of the Winter Light's compartments. You checked. They weren't so lucky, I guess, not in the end. You hold up a vial of stabilizer to the light. This was all you find in their compartment. A parting gift from SNR. Well, it won't go to waste now. You put it in your pocket. The thought still bothers you, though. Two ships carrying sleepers coming into the same yard, two, one after the other? That feels wrong. You flick back and forth between data sets on the terminal thinking, and you see that thumbprint again the mark of someone trying to get in. 
someone who entered the winter light with precision and speed. And when they were done, left the reactor to clean up the rest. The thought of that person makes you shiver. Suddenly, the office door creaks open. Drago stands in the doorway, staring at the equipment and notes you've assembled. What is all... What's all this? He snatches the slate from the desk, faster than he realized he could move. You running an investigation here? What am I paying you for? The drone on his shoulder starts whining shrilly, his anger passing to it through his implants. Yeah, that's pretty outright. I feel like are you hiding something is not going to get the response we want. Where is the ship from or stay silent? I kind of feel like maybe his guilt is retching him, you know? Maybe if I don't say anything at all, he'll come clean. He starts shaking his head. I know you have a lot of questions, but this isn't the way. He turns away, muttering to himself, This is the last thing I need. This ship had a sleeper on it. Drago freezes, suddenly angry. What did you say? He pushes past you to look at the terminal on the list. He shakes his head. So what? Aren't all of you trying to escape? You're lucky it was you who made it out alive, not them. He folds his arm indignantly. Drago seems to steady himself, and then turns back to you, the heat map of the reactor failure reflected in, the, in his headset's glassy eyes. I've given you a place to stay. I've given you work. I've... He stumbles over the words, unsure what to say. There's plenty of others who would have sold you on, turned you in, but not me. No. I know. The eye softens. Look, you've helped me too. He quiets the drone. I've done well by you, and you've returned the favor. He straightens up and clears his throat. But this obsession you have with the ship isn't going to work for me. I can't have you dig making my clients nervous. I can't have you digging up whatever it is you're after. He sighs. You can't work here anymore. What about the winter light? He reaches over and switches the monitor off. Forget about the ship. You have enough to keep up. Keep you up? Dragos reaches across and flicks off the terminal. As the light of the monitor dies, a kind of eerie calm falls on both of you. Whatever this was, it's done. You made it out, sleeper. That means you had to move on. Someone killed that ship and its crew. And you want to meet him? He shakes his head. We're done here. In the dark, Drago's headset glints, and you wish for a moment you could see his eyes and meet them. Maybe then he would understand. You get up from the desk, and Drago's gathers his notes, stuffing them into a pocket of his overalls. He holds the door for you, his headset as expressionless as always. You can stay. You can stay in the container. I won't take that from you. Don't come back. His tone is final, definite, with an edge of disappointment. You walk out of the office and then out of the yard, never stopping to look back. You leave the yard, thumbing the vial in your pocket, knowing that this, at least, guarantees you a little more time. And as you walk, your mind once again drifts to that person who killed the winter light, whether or not that person will come for you. Fascinating. And we got our upgrade point. Solid. We're buying our self-repair. That's the top one. We can use scrap materials now to repair our condition. Super dope. Kuro, I'm in the middle of playing this, so I'm going to leave. We're just starting. We're just starting. I thought I would show people. I'm not playing my game. I started a new file just to teach people how to play. Um, but we're also probably just about done because Pineapple's back now. And I'll stick around. Um, but yeah, I was just I was teaching people how to play the game. I think it's a lot of fun, too. I'm glad to hear that you're enjoying it. It's a good time. A perfect game? No. A good game? Definitely. Definitely a good game. I know a lot of tips and tricks that I'm using for this playthrough. I'm probably... Let's see, I only have two there. I did just lose my place of work, which is a bummer. There's no way I'm going to be able to win here. That is a bummer. Oh, but good. I can learn. I can learn a little bit. Pick the machinist. Yeah, the first time I did the, the center one, the, like, pretty standard... Standard one. Operator, I think is what it's called. But this time I decided the machinist. No! My energy! That's fine. Uh, we'll go get... We'll get a bite to eat. Yeah, you did operator as well. I felt like they probably put the one in the center that was like the one they would recommend or whatever, you know? So where are you, Kuro? 
Oh, you picked the machinist. Got you, got you, got you. I guess you can tell me what you've unlocked. We literally just unlocked the low end. Unlocked three areas so far. Got you. All right, let's see. Got a few more options now. I guess we need to get a new job. I would also really like to... I really want to see if I can get, uh... Get Fang to... Do me a solid earlier in this day. Ooh, interesting. I can't even do the tablet room? That's great. Okay, but I can't make deliveries. That's pretty good. And I could buy the new unit. But I'll tell you the secret about the units is, uh... They're no different. I really thought that at least one of the units would have better... Like, they wouldn't... They wouldn't run down your condition or something. But nope. They're all identical. All they really allow you to do is to wake up in a different spot. Like, I thought maybe even, like, maybe the last one or whatever. But I guess I, I could. Maybe there's more. Maybe I haven't found the last one. I feel like I have. I'm very much in post-game. An apartment is functionally the same as a metal container. Apparently. Apparently. We still had a couple of clicks still. Interesting. How are you doing today? I'm doing good today, Kuro. How about yourself? We were supposed to be playing games together, but... We didn't really have a strong interest. But Pineapple's back now, and Pineapple, if you want to play a game, you let me know. I'll hop into a game. I just wanted to show you guys this game. We've played it for about an hour. I have a book on blast. Same with you, Perry, if you want to play a game. I don't know if anybody else is still hanging around. Sneaky is taking a break. I don't know if Sneaky's back in Plague Tale by now. Oh, I'm so uncertain of what to do next. Because I go and finish low end. Lurking as I do. You're all good. Just saying the option's always there. That's all. Ooh, yeah, caster's good. I wonder if I can... I wonder if I have enough for him, yeah. You cross between two walls of units. Oh, I'm here just lurking as a dinner. Enjoy. What's for dinner? What's there, what did everybody have for dinner tonight? Drop dinners in the chat. What games are on the table? I mean, anything. Whatever. You guys know the games we have. There's always Minecraft. There's Pokemon Unite. There's Overwatch. There's, uh... Mario Kart, there's ravioli and garlic bread, there's salad and zippo Soscana. That sounds delicious. I want Italian now. Why is everybody having Italian tonight? Is Italian, is Wednesday night Italian night? We had white chicken chili. It was exceptional. Across between two walls of units, one of the cavernous streets at the center of the low end. The pressurized bridge is full of a clack of tavla. The ch shouts of children and the whir of air filters. White chicken chili is real good. Is spicy nugs from Wendy's Italian? I'm pretty sure it is. Canonically, it is. Sleeper. 
You turn to see a man sitting at a table, table alone, somehow untouched by the hustle and bustle of people around. He gestures to the stool on the opposite side of the table. Sit. Yeah, I sit. Yeah, I sit. I, for this man? For this man? I sit. For the man playing maybe go? Tavla that is maybe also go? Yes, I'm, I'm sitting for him. Totally, I've got pizza. Yum. Italian night. Everybody's having Italian, except for me. You sit at the metal stool and he starts setting out the board with counters, or at least the filter cap flow enders typically use in their place. Caster. He says by way of introduction, looking over his glasses. Night or day? He asks, gesturing at the caps, crudely sprayed white and black. Night, always. He nods, the black counters are already on your side. Let's begin. You take a plastic die, each pitted and worn, and rolled to determine who starts. Caster rolls a six, you a four. I lead. He smiles and begins to move his first cap precisely along the board. Uh, I don't know if you can beat Caster. I wonder if you can. I'm going to Google it. Why not? Can you beat Caster in... What is this game called? Citizen Sleeper. is this one thing <laughs> man don't let me click things don't let me click things oh there we go oh this is for endings though man I don't think they let me know. I want to beat Caster. I, maybe you can't. Maybe you can't. Maybe it just always ends the same way. I played carefully, so I'll play aggressively this time. Play to, uh, passes back and forth between you. The dice changing hands as the cap spread along the board. As it does, Caster speaks, eyes not leaving the caps. It's unusual to see a sleeper on the eye. That's why I wanted to play you. You take your turn, rolling a five and a six. Aggressive. After all, a sleeper's mind must be somehow different to a human one. Being emulated, I mean. The caster talks you, as the caster talks you, target his counters, halting his progress, progress but exposing your caps as you do. I don't mean to offend you. Caster meets your eye. I merely see that you're by definition different. What's been subtracted in the emulation? What's been added? He stacks the wall of counters, the boundary that must break, he must break. He hands you the dice. You ever think about this, sleeper? About what you were before, what you are now? Always. You roll a double one and solidify your wall. Caster whistles. A holding game, commendable. It can be brave to build from what came before. He rolls the dice and le leaps your wall in a single move. We cannot idle too long, sleeper. The slower we move, the slower we or the sooner we're caught. The past you is not just an idea, a concept uh, for you. It is a living, breathing person. He looks up over his glasses, his eyes bright and wide. You split from them like a shadow splitting from its caster. They may be sleeping now, yes, but one day they will awake and carry on with their lives, unaware of your fate, no matter what it may be. He hands you the dice, smiling. You are a branch severed from the main trunk, an offshoot who refuses to die, so to speak. You roll again, under pressure now, trying to slip your caps out from under casters before he solidifies control of the game. So what I am curious about is how you see yourself in all this. Caster asks, what does this tangle of truths make you? Driven. Caster laughs. That much is obvious, sleeper. I see it in your eyes. You're eager to make all this count for something. Caster looks away through the glass to the crowded units on all sides. But driven towards what? He starts removing caps, his home board now full. Is there an end here, or just endurance? You try a few more rolls, attempt to get back in the game, but Caster clears his home board with a sense of the inevitable. He has known he was winning for a while. That's the same thing that happened to me, man! Come on! I feel I may have pushed too far. He slides another cap from the board. I apologize. My curiosity has a habit of getting the better of me. You roll to return a cap to the board, but all the spaces are blocked. Caster clasps his hands apologetically. You play well, really. Your weakness is not your game. You can't win. He smiles warmly. We have much to learn from each other. He slides his glasses back up his nose and sits back. I feel we could share knowledge, ideas, perhaps even data. His eyes glint with that last word, to our mutual benefit. He slides his final cap from the board. It's over. He's won. I'll see. 
please. I don't want to make you uncomfortable. He holds up his palms. My intention is only to help you endure here, and if I am able, feed my curiosities. Game over, you notice the bustle of the walkway once more, the call of the children, the deliveries, the arguments, and reconciliations. They wash over you as you stand and leave, Caster nodding goodbye as you do. Crossing the walkway, you replay the moves of the game in your mind, looking for an opening you were sure was there. Man! That ain't my dad. No, I'm not even close. I don't have any having it? That doesn't sound right. Okay. Whatever. How much does it cost again? 150. I'm a ways from there. I am a ways from there. Pineapple says, I have things I can show you in Minecraft, but that is just me. Anything is good with me. I got no thoughts. I'm fine with hopping in. We'll wrap up this day. Wrap up this day, and then we'll get into some... Uh, get into some craft. One and one, I guess we just need to get things done. The yeah, items are always one. Oh no, a hunter! I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, whoopsie. <laughs> I kind of forgot about the hunter. Kind of forgot they even existed. A glimmer in the dark catches your eye as the orb of hunter's head appears in the distance. It's looking for you. Hide. You slip down into the ghostly structures of the eye, a feeling like passing through a cloud as their data structures deform and reform around you. Another glimmer catches your eye, closer now, that roving orb wreathed in tentacles. It flickers, jumps once, twice, and then it's here. Hunter is here. Entity, submit to inquiry. Hunter reaches for you in that unpleasantly familiar way. It's waving threads, creating a cage. Struggle! You push against the threads as they close in, becoming frenzied as you push them aside. You're caught by whipping tendrils and feel them pulling you away from the anchor of your body. So basically we go into the matrix, we go into the ghost and shell and we're able to like be in the internet. And when we're in the internet, we are hacking into the mainframe. And whenever we are doing that, a hunter is like noticing us. And this is the hunter. You push through clearing the threads into the old for processing comes the scream from behind, but you are already gliding away back to your anchor, your body. You're awake, dizzy, distorted, but safe. And I don't know, okay, okay, that's what happens. All right, we just get damaged. Okay. Well, that's not very nice. Look at all that damage. That's a lot of damage. Good to know. Good to know. I'm kind of wasting my time now. Man. That's a lot of damage. You got it. You got it. Kuro's, Kuro's knows what I'm working with here. Somebody knows their internet memes. Don't have enough though, do we? No, we need one more yet again. I need eight though. Do I have enough to afford him? All right, we'll sleep for the day and then we'll log into some grave. So yeah, this is Citizen Sleeper. I commend it to you. I recommend that you play this game. It's so fun. It's very good. It's very engaging. It's very board game-like. Uh, I'm super into it. Maybe, maybe obsessed. Some might say obsessed. Some might be comfortable saying I'm obsessed with this game. Um, it's just really fun. And I think you should play it. And I hope you will. I hope you consider it. Now let's get into the grave. Let's see. I'll go ahead and log into a room if anybody wants to hop in. Make sure we're in the right area. Looks like we are. Oh, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to slide this bad boy up here. 
It's been a while. It's been a while since I've played Minecraft, so I have no idea. Looks pretty dope. It's real good. It's real good storytelling. Um, I'm, I don't plan on voice acting the entire game. But if I could, I would. Why is Minecraft never picked up? No, wrong one. Where am I? Oh, this place. Oh my goodness. I don't like that place. That was where everything went wrong. Look, you can even see all the stuff in my pockets is where I got frustrated. That's very funny. And I don't know why music is not happening, so we're gonna turn on some spoofy. I don't know what is the deal with Minecraft, but it has just never worked. Still need to reinstall all my games. Yes, you do. Right, now the question is, what game do we need to go back, or what uh, what house do we need to go back to? I got so many at this point. Wayne Manor looks great. Christina is always doing very impressive work. I got some bread. You guys, one of my favorite things ever are the candy cane Hershey Kisses that come out every Christmas, and they brought them out. I'm so excited. What's up, pineapple? I need some bread. What? They are so addicting. They're the best ones. I don't know what you're doing, but I'm going to my, um, going to a home. Any of my homes. Oh, you're in the waiting room. That's right. I forgot you didn't have access. Aha, right, we, there we, go. we should be able to hear you. Yep, I have to share myself, so there we go. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to turn down Spoofy. Awesome. Um... So I shall take you on a somewhat of a new tour. So I don't know who specifically, but now we have a uh, a new farm oh. of animals. So there's I'm now a fence that out. goes around a whole bunch of areas now. And then the entrance is now over here, right on the path blocks. And I ended up, uh, was able to fix the nether portal. So now when you enter and exit the nether portal, it should all come from um, this one that's in here. Well, I definitely know exactly what you mean. So if you go in, and then I ended up fixing up the nether a little bit as well. So now we have another house. Is it in here? Yep, and this is the... I don't know how he got there. Anyways, so yep, so this is the new like nether kind of fortress area. So upstairs is a another level, and you can um any this is access to anybody whoever want whoever whoever wants it or whoever wants to use it, and we can add different things in here. This is all put in for um half slabs, so nothing can spawn on these, so no light sources is needed. Awesome! I didn't even know that was a thing. And then, and then downstairs, have the we have these um, stairs to get out, and then blocks to jump back in, so no mobs can get in either, because uh, piglins can open doors. I found that out recently. What happened to the spooky goblin floating head that was just here? Um, it tends to despawn fairly quickly. He was so there. He is. He's so big. Oh, he sees me. Oh, fireball. Getting out of here. He didn't like that I saw him. He was so big. Yep, and so that is one of the things that I was ended up working on for a little bit. Well, it looks great. 
I had no idea that half slabs made it so that things couldn't spawn. That's so smart. Yes. Then we also have a new pathway to the um, nether fortress that is currently a work in progress, but it is slightly complete. Self-conscious ghasts. Is that actually their name, or are you making fun of the fact that they seemed embarrassed because I saw them? Then if you want to hop into this boat, and this would take us to the nether, uh, port, uh, nether fortress. Uh, there you go. And so I'm currently working on getting more blue ice, since blue ice and boats are the one of the fastest ways of traveling. Right. And as you can see, I just need to get the second layer in. It, the first layer is already done, but the second layer just needs a little bit more. Blue ice is a little bit more difficult to get than regular packed ice. But otherwise than that, then all you have to do is just head up the ladder, and then you'll be on basically your way to the another fortress. They you just watch your step when you get up here. Oh, hello. Yep. And then it's just right up here. Straight to the nether um, fortress. Why is there... How did you get here? I don't think I made eye contact with him. Oh, I, I just knocked him off. Oh, good. Yep, and so... This gives us easy access to this. So this is where we just were? Uh, this is the nether fortress, so this is where you get your um, wither heads and such of that sort. Well, I don't, I don't know anything you're saying, but that's very cool. I'm very scared. I'm scared of everything. Uh, that's fair. We can head back. Uh, don't oh. go that way. You're going to want to go this way. Stairs. I'll try to get it a little bit more obvious where the stairs are at. Uh, it's still a little bit of a work in progress. I'm trying to get it more of a flat area so they can... um more withers can spawn not withers but uh wither skeletons can spawn it's, it's very interesting way. that our um that our nether fortress is so far away from the spawn area do you think that's just because of where we started uh i think it's just how the seed worked out it's a uh, as speedrunners would say, it's a bad nether. <laughs> that doesn't look like... Oh, you're right, I never changed the game type. Oh, good call. I need to implement the thing that allows you to do the command. If it's not already implemented. So where does this ice boat go? Uh, this site boat goes actually to multiple different areas, so if you want to hop into here, I can actually show you the different areas where it will lead. Why are you holding a tiny little baby creeper head? Uh-oh. Because uh, I ended up getting a couple of uh, the mob heads, so I got all the mob heads uh, just recently. Which you get by creating a charged creeper and then having it explode on other mobs. So this is the first stop, and this is the Mushroom Island, and is also where you can get a bunch of ice, because it's uh, packed ice and such of that sort. Trombone, and how are then, you doing, by the way? Glad you're here. The next stop on the path is the Mob Farm. It's a fair distance away. Uh, if I get enough blue ice, I'll probably change this. Uh, to all blue ice, and then I can show you out the mob farm real quick. So you want me to go into the mob farm? Yes. I always make sure to ask twice in this game because uh, so often I get myself in trouble. What's happening? Oh, I see. Yep, and then you want to head up uh, these stairs over here. can't tell you how many times I've heard Christina say, don't do that. No, don't do that. <laughs> and it's a fairly long ways up. I'm going to guess that's a death if you uh, fall. Uh, don't land in the blocks. If you land in the water, then yes, you're fine. 
But if you land on those blocks, then yes, it will it will definitely be not so good. But here is the mob farm, and this works uh, day and night. And since it's so high up, uh, nothing can spawn below it. Uh, nothing can spawn in the water and such of that, so that uh, increases the mob count that can drop. Uh, and basically, we just wait here, and then things fall. And then you just kill them, and then you get experience, and also um, items drop down into here. It's not as a, as efficient, um, and I'm wondering if it's just because of its since it's on a realm, as um, some of the ones that I've done in single player. But it's still not too bad. A whole bunch of mobs spawn. Anyways, we can take the expressway down again if we want. What is the expressway? Just jump. There's water down there. You promise? Yeah, there's, there's, there's water everywhere. Just don't jump past the ladder. At least two blocks past the ladder. Two blocks past the ladder. Okay. Whew. Ooh. Sorry to join so late. It's been quite a night with bedtimes. I feel that. It feels like everybody's sick right now, Zando. That's our situation. Um, but yes, I will do your movie, movie game, and I'll add another another gotcha pawn for you whenever I finally get to restock it. Your movie movie game tonight is, uh, I have a very particular set of skills. Skills uh, like unearthing frozen prehistoric teenagers who end up being way cooler than me. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, I do have a very particular set of skills. Skills like unearthing frozen prehistoric uh, teenagers who end up being way cooler than me. <laughs> oh, that was so fast. That was so fast, Ando. That was so fast. It is taken Cino Man. Oh my goodness. That's so quick, dude. Does it matter what side of the portal I go in? No. Gosh, taken Cino Man is so good, man. I can't believe you got it that fast. And then <laughs> we can continue on, but there's really nothing else to see at the moment. Uh, I just have a wood farm relatively over there that I just had. I had to if I want to gather a whole bunch of wood. But otherwise than that, there's nothing else over there at the moment. Love you some Encino, man. It's definitely a movie. And there we are. Baffling. This game, I think, is, of all the games, perhaps the most overwhelming to me. Like I, feel I haven't like, even touched the redstone part of it. I feel like... Uh, <laughs> I feel like this is whenever I rant and rave about some random hyperfixation that I have. That's every experience I've ever had in Minecraft. I feel like I'm on the receiving end. Clueless. This wasn't where I thought it would be. Why am I here? Why are you there? <laughs> Did I go to the wrong one? No, 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 no. You, you, you're, you're good. You want to get it back out of there before you. Oh, you're going back. No, you did go on the right one. Um, I don't. It's fixed for me. That's all I can say at this point. Uh, hold on a second before you go back in. Too late. Oh, okay. That works too. Yeah, I'm here again. Yes. So Weird. I don't 100% know why that is the case. Okay. So you back in the nether at this moment? Yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to need you to come back through. Do I want you to come back through? Yeah. I'm trying to remember how I fixed it. Trombone uh, popped in for just a snide comment and then left. Where'd you go, Trombone? Okay. 
try coming back in now and seeing what happens. Encino Man came out right before I turned seven and I was young enough to fall into the Poly Shore trap. That and Son-in-Law are some guilty pleasures of mine. Why am I not, why am I not leaving? What? Okay. Well, here I am. Don't know what just happened to me. That was there you go. Perfect. But I'm here. And now you're back. I have a soft spot so now, in law. so now it should be fixed for you as well. Cool. Do you want me to test it? Uh, if you want to. It should work. The real good news of playing this game again is that it's going to at least allow me to have a minimal amount of uh, rem like remembering how the game worked before Mario Party on Friday. I get a cursory amount of remembering. Oh, one of these bets real quick. There we go. No longer getting attacked by phantoms. The only Polly Shore movie that comes to my brain where I think of Polly Shore is uh, by the I was not in I was not in Polly Shore's era. checking out all the stuff well i was trying to find a place to put the beds i have two extra random beds i don't want and i can't figure out where they would go i also have a mushroom a single solitary mushroom and i don't know where to put it Any, anywhere i think would work this box also gets two random beds i like it I love the baby cows. I love them so much. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that um, the mobs aren't despawning here. Because normally it's a certain amount of distance that they um, need to be restricted to travel to in order for them, them not to uh, despawn. Wishes map is still very, very impressive. Yes. I've been trying to uh, up it as well. I guess there is. Is that my underground? That's my underground base right there. Uh, this one over here is the village. Uh, your castle base is right at the bottom right hand corner over yeah, here. Yeah, no, not that one. Um, I hate that one. I hate that one. I want to blow it up. I want to destroy it. Is it killing you that maybe 30 bats is streaming Citizen Sleeper and you're missing it? I didn't know. Is he starting it? Oh, that's so fun. And then I think your other base is somewhere over in this general direction. Oh, I see. We haven't quite yet reached it. No, not at the moment. I can show you a couple yeah, other things. That makes sense. That's my favorite base. Oh, no. Uh, I believe it was struck by lightning. Oh no. oh no! With the chicken on the wall. Why is there a cooked chicken picture? Oh my goodness. It is killing me, Zando, but it wasn't killing me until you told me that it was happening. I'll, wa I'll have to watch that VOD. I don't know if I don't know. Does Bats keep his VODs up? I'll have to watch that one. If he does. I hope he's enjoying it. Someone Thanos snapped it. <laughs> yeah, it really does. Gotta go. Then... Everyone wants to have father-son bonding time by me crushing him in COD. See you later. See you, Sneaky. Go, go, uh, destroy your child in the video game. I can show you my new storage area as well. Which is right in the back. And 
this is the new storage area. That's a lot of storage. Holy moly. Now I understand why you said just put it anywhere. Just about, and that's uh, currently just excess of everything that I possibly might need at some point. <laughs> this was going to be a um, villager camp, but it ended up not working out as well as planned. So I kind of converted it back into a storage area. Baffling, man. And your dog, cat, is sad. Sad and staring in the corner. Okay. I had a cat once. And then Splash took it away from me. I'm still not recovered. Um, do you have a spot where you would like beacons at this moment in time? What do they do? Is this where the uh, thing you run faster? Yes. The fact that you're running faster, have faster um, mining, do more damage, jump higher, and have regeneration, have uh, damage resistance. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would like one at my water base, but I would also say the, the church should have one. Those yes, that's nice. That would make sense to me. Okie dokie. I'll make sure to get those set up then. I currently have five extra at this moment in time. Yeah, the church one definitely makes sense. And the water base is purely for vanity. Rune looks like the end of the Raiders of the Lost Ark, for sure. The water base I actually have um done. I haven't done anything to your water base, but I have done something near your water base. Very fun. I always go visit it. I always go visit it every time I play Minecraft just because I want to go through the tunnel. This tunnel is my crowning achievement of all things Minecraft. Of everything I've ever done, this is my favorite. I listened to so many podcasts while I was etching out this tunnel. See you, Kuro. Thanks for the lurk. Appreciate you. Go you end up using... Sponges to get the water out, or did you use uh, like sand or something? Yeah, I used the like chip away method where you fill it up and empty it. Oh, okay. So I would like do sections at a time. It was probably not the most effective way, but according to the internet at the time, it was the most effective way, and I just did what I read online. That's fair. If someone knew of a better way, they didn't tell me. Or they didn't, they didn't put it online. They kept it for themselves, selfishly. You have to go to the dark web to get those kind of uh, Minecraft stuff. Makes sense. Who put a horse on top of my glass horse? There? Oh yeah, and the Skyway. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the Skyway is so ridiculous. Oh my goodness. The Skyway is actually uh, where we're going to want to head at the moment. Okay, cool. I'll take the Skyway. It's been a while. Boing. The Skyway I am less proud of, but also a little proud. It did take a whole lot of time. Oh no, I don't have a minecart. No! no. I gotta have a minecart. simply what I do. See if I have any extra minecarts on me. I don't think one. I do, but I can definitely make it. Oh, you got one already? Okay. Having played a fair amount of this game when it came out on the 360, I totally appreciate all the time and talent it takes to make this stuff. I just have very little interest in getting back into it. 
maybe if and when my kids discover it. The only reason I'm playing it is because I just discovered it. I did not discover it in the 360 era. And even then, I pretty quickly, it was, a, it was a flash in the pan. I get it. I definitely get it. Makes complete sense why it is as big of a viral success as it, as it was and is and continues to be. I get the fascination. The hype. I just feel like my old man brain doesn't have the time to uh, devote to it. To learning it. I was listening to a podcast earlier today that was talking about that phenomenon of, uh, like I just described, of feeling overwhelmed and incapable of ever catching up to what other people know. So like somebody would give up in Minecraft because they're like, well, I'll never know as much as Christina or as much as Pineapple Pope or as much as, you know, insert fill in the blank about it. And so I won't even try. And they were talking about how that feeling starts setting in in like elementary school. And so there are, there are kids that are like nine years old that are like, well, why would I start taking swim lessons if I did that? Like somebody else is so much better than me because they've been doing it since they were five. So that's so sad. And this is my current project. Are you controlling me? My controller lost connection. Oh my goodness. I thought you were oh, I'm not, I'm definitely I'm definitely not controlling you. <laughs> All right. Your new project is this village? Yes, it's this village. You're making this village? I am making this village, yes. Well, not making the village. I am planning on making... Um, I was watching a 2B2T, which is a, um anarchy server. A very, very popular anarchy server. Um, and basically, it's it's where basically everything is allowed and nothing is against the rules. So it's not exactly the greatest place, but uh, they ended up uh, finding a way to get nether uh, water into the nether. And so they ended up, I, I can't remember the name of the people who ended up making it, but they made a water um, kind of village in in the nether. And, and so I was gonna take uh, some inspiration and kind of make a water village in the in the desert. Since it's no longer possible to get um, water in survival Minecraft. I actually don't even know if it's possible in creative to get water into the nether. I would have never even known that was a thing. So what have you what have you done in here? Is it just um, like a pretty standard village? Well, I destroyed this entire mountain. And yeah, I destroyed I part of the village and filled everything we, uh, in. So there's no more holes or caves. I filled all back all the floor back in with uh, sand instead. And these ones are the only ones that are standing at the moment in time. I don't know if I'm going to keep them or not. Is uh, probably unlikely that I will, but I may use them as um, kind of templates for the different uh, buildings that I want to place. But at the moment, I have the villagers all in in here at the moment. And there's quite a few of them. I feel so bad for the villagers. That's that's kind of why I'm trying to get them to where they are um, oh my more free. <laughs> oh no, it's like an ant hill. Why are they all going to bed? Because right, it's nighttime now. <laughs> Just a bunch of a bunch of people hopping to bed. Oh no. Oh my goodness. I feel like in the arms of the angel needs to be playing in the background. <laughs> hey. There's a lot, lot of villagers. I did not expect them to be able to fill up all the beds that I had placed, but they managed. <laughs> they just keep going. They're still looking for him. Hey, there's two over here. Hey, Jethro. Uh, two over here, friend. We may have a defective villager at the moment. Are Is he on the? Oh right no, he's now? not. Okay. okay. He's, uh, I have a villager that's on the floor at the moment. What are the green sparkles around their head? Uh, that is them being happy. Okay. And the, like, lava rocks? 
the lava rocks is them being mad. Okay. And so the madder they get, the uh, more expensive the prices of their trades are. The happier they are, the um, less expensive they are until it gets to a certain point. How do they feel about someone standing on them, looking at them while they sleep? Uh, oh, they are unfazed. Oh, yes, okay. you can. They they don't they don't particularly like that, but it really doesn't matter. Well, who would? Who likes being woken up? <laughs> the bed still bounced with a villager on it. <laughs> oh man, I'm just destroying this man's stomach. As someone that has a three-year-old, I know how bad this hurts. It's like, pow! Like, play with me! Play with me! Ugh, hurts. Oh, yeah, sure enough, there's one on the ground. Ooh. Oh, no! Oh, what happened to you? Oh, no! Oh, that's not how beds work. Oh! <laughs> it is so much worse on your end than it is mine. I just got one guy who's just oh, vibing no. around. Oh, I got two, I guess, that are five on the this floor. This one's my favorite. Because he's a little bridge between beds. Can I walk on him or do I go down? No, I do not. Okay. So he's not really there. Oh, no. What happened to this guy? Oh, no. This guy. Oh, man. No. <laughs> There's so many more. <laughs> Why are these three together, though? <laughs> For what reason? Oh, this is the best one. Oh, that's the best one. Look at this. Wow. Oh, my that's gosh. so many. <laughs> I feel like they're getting worse the more I look at them. <laughs> oh no. The, the longer you stare, the worse it gets. <laughs> what on earth? Yeah, that the six the six laying together is definitely the worst. <laughs> That's baffling. How many? I think it's I think it's maybe just three. I got over over that right? I think it is just three. One. I count three. I think it's just their arms and their hands mess things up. And then they just kind of ground. And then just a cat. Oh, my just a cat. Wandering villager. What are you selling today, wandering villager? Nothing of interest. Except for small drip leaves. That's, that's somewhat interesting. Are you trying Why to get out? Why can I not climb on the ladder? All right, so you have to jump onto one of these sides and then jump up. Okay. <laughs> you will have to sprint jump. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, no. You, you cannot go directly from the side. You, If you're jumping from that one, it, that's the more hard, the harder jump of the two. If you jump from the this one right here, it's a little bit easier. So it's normally just yeah. a little too straight. There we go. No, let's, yeah, straight jump. Uh, one of the other interesting things about this village is it actually has a skeleton spawner right here. And so I'm going to try to find a way to incorporate that into the build as well. Interesting. So there's one, what, trapped in here? Yeah, it's a skeleton spawner. So if you head down... There's a little cage. Yep. Boop. There we go. It's currently built for a um, for farming at the moment. But there's the skeleton spawner right above us. Gotcha. What's up, Splash? How we doing? Pineapple's just showing me all his uh, latest endeavors in the server, in the realm. And I continue to be baffled and amazed and know nothing. I think that bunny. Otherwise, I know uh, he likes my golden carrots. But at the moment, I think that's as much as I've done at the moment. I'm trying to think if there's something else that I have worked on. I'm planning on getting some more um, elytras for the server again and going on out on an expedition into the end again. Those are the flying things? Yep, that's the thing that I use to get around. Very cool. Some of the phantoms. Just a 
Yep, not 100%. I think I, I think you ended up placing that there when you were building the... Um... <laughs> Sounds like something I would do. It's very fair. Skybridge. Yeah, Splash, I had to remember how to even play the game before my uh, Mario Party. And this was just a um, sandstorm mine that I had going on. And there's just caves. A couple of the caves that I did not get to. Oh, hello, witch. Such an interesting game. I remain overwhelmed. The best part about it is I'm I'm still considered by most in the community as a novice. I can't imagine. Just knowing any of the information makes you more than a novice. If you're a novice, then I'm like the textbook definition of a rube. And I don't like that. One thing I haven't touched yet is uh, redstone, but it almost seems like you need a degree in redstone engineering. Right. Everything that I've done with redstone has purely been off of um, YouTube tutorials. Yeah. And even then, it's not like I'm really understanding what I'm doing. I'm just following exactly what they tell me to do. I'm understanding. What I understand is just coding, basically. You're like you're you're making connections and networks. Yep. All my nights staying up too late with Resident Evil has caught up to me. Time to sleep. Have a wonderful night. See you, Zando. Don't dream of... Uh, don't dream of... Uh, what's his name? Oh, what's his name, man? Heisenberg. Don't dream of Heisenberg and his weird baby. Or Heisenberg didn't have the baby. Whoever had the weird baby. Don't dream of the, don't dream of the weird baby. Don't tell you what to do. Okay, dream of the big baby. Dream of the weird, the re weird, gross baby. Oh, creeper. Pineapple Pope, I don't know who told you that, but I would put you on par with me and Christina. I would put all of you on par with anyone ever of all time. You're all tops as far as I'm concerned. You all know dramatically more than I do. So just take solace in knowing that you could quit playing Minecraft right now and you would you would still on your deathbed know more than I will ever know. the solace I have to offer you. <laughs> I'm one of the oldies that came back. I started playing it on the Xbox 360 and then I left uh, Minecraft for quite a while and I didn't really start playing it again until uh, the server. This is, this is easily the longest I've ever gone on a uh, Minecraft world. I wonder what what is it that is encouraging you to be in the space for so long, do you think it's just that it's so like free with the creativity mode and everything? Well, no, we're on survival, but I guess you're. Uh, it's figured out to the point that you've got enough people that have, have figured out spaces and. Uh, I think the idea of having other people um there to see your work and such of that sort is something that's kind uh -huh. of interesting. Um. And I've, I've kind of changed my mindset when it comes to Minecraft in the first place. Because it's a very difficult game um, to play for long periods of time. For the reasons of, um, as soon as you finish a project, you normally don't have another project to get to. That's fair. And so a lot of times when, uh, especially when I was playing um, in my single player worlds, my, my normally my project would be just to beat the game. And then as soon as I did that, then huzzah! What else, what else is, there, is there to do? And so now I've decided to take on bigger and bigger projects with the uh, 
village and then um, different things. And so I've given myself stuff to do, which I think has greatly helped uh, keep the interest of it going. That makes a lot of sense. That's definitely the connectional aspect of it, I think, that uh, has kept people engaged for so long. I definitely get that feel of like one project to the next. I have an idea. I want to make the idea. I make the idea. I get tired. I don't play for much. My fascination has definitely remained to be with the water and with glass why this project is still my favorite i would love to do more exploration underwater but it was such a pain it was so irritating uh you can always do the uh water breathing potions right which i'm not 100 percent sure how to make but <laughs> i can I always look up, up a guide <laughs> i remember looking it up whenever i was doing the uh the real early stuff uh of my tunnel and it was very irritating try to find the thing i just didn't know how to do any of it they uh they made a lot of assumptions of like you would know how to do this thing and this thing they didn't literally walk you through it was like the peanut butter and jelly experiment in uh middle school where they'd be like make a peanut butter and jelly and you had to describe it in very specific oh, I know. detail and i know exactly uh, the, teacher, what you're about. the teacher would just do what you said you know that was always a good time I need the the explicit scientific method of how to make the water potion, but I know it took puffer fish. I remember that. Yep. Yep. Uh, it was puffer, uh, awkward potion and puffer fish. And then I don't know how to power it up. It's either redstone or glowstone. I would assume redstone, but I could be wrong. Oh man. Controller has lost connection. It keeps it keeps rejecting me. Interesting. Batteries must be dead. I believe glowstone makes it go longer, says Splash. That makes sense. It's one of the two. The potions is something that I, I'm relatively new to as well. I just made a whole bunch of reg regeneration potions because I went out and fought the wither a couple times. I like the water fountain as well. This is a really cool water fountain. I don't know who made it, but somebody did. What was it? Oh, uh, the water fountain that's out uh, to the past my house. There's a somebody ended up making a water fountain. Splash says he did it. Oh, he, nice. I like it. I'm very curious. I think I've seen it. Is it near the church too? Yes. There's definitely light missing. Yeah, I'm like 90% sure that I saw it the last time I logged in with Splash. I think the underwater looks so cool. I just want to explore it so much. You also got like the perfect biome for it too. It's got all the coral. What is fishing like in Minecraft? Is it actually fun? Is it at all interesting? I I can't particularly answer that question. I mean, it's line goes down, you pick up fish. Yeah. Or There's other no, like, goodies. Game. It, it's 
I mean, Splash there's a bubbles that go there, right? <laughs> yes, I've seen it down. It does look awesome. Yeah, it's super cool. I like the uh, glowstone that's in it as well. that glowstone under it uh yeah it's like right inside of awesome. so probably at night it glows up pretty bright yeah what's the box uh that was the old um fishing uh, auto fishing method which no longer works, sadly. Got, like, patched out? Uh, yes, they changed how fishing works. Which is kind of what this is over here, is an attempt to make somewhat of a fishing area. Splash says, is it broken? No. What is broken? The fishing, I think. Uh, fishing, auto fishing. Y yes. Uh, they basically made it so um, the area, in order to get items, so you can still get fish from it, um, but you can't get items from it. Because the only way to get items now is by, I think, a 9x9 nine nine, um, block of at least two deep water from where your fishing uh, rod is. Or fishing bobber is. I think my favorite thing with Minecraft is seeing someone else do the work that I want to do. Like seeing someone recreate Stardew Valley in Minecraft or Faraway Town from Memory in Minecraft. And then I don't have to be the one that does it. I just get to look at their work and see how good it is. I don't disagree because I'm definitely appreciating what, uh, um, the manor at the moment so that's really coming along we'll have to ask christina the next time she logs on if uh like what her biggest project is if wayne manor is definitely like her biggest that she's ever done the church is pretty huge but wayne manor is dramatic I could just never come up with so much detail out of all the different block types and such of that sort. I can't help but notice that you have uh, something coming out of the top of your building that is reaching up to heaven. Yep, that is the beacons. Okay. So if you would like to come up, I can show you them. It's just these right up here. Have they always been black and red? No. It oh, is... You've got like some colored black on top or something. Yep. So if you take these out, it changes back. Interesting. But if you place them down, then it is all by the glass panes. And if you place it back, then it turns back again. So we definitely need some purple ones, some amethyst ones to rise up out of the church. I can definitely make that happen. I'd have to consult with Christy, um, Christina about where to put it. Yes. Yeah, she's the mastermind. So I think I have five. Nope, I have four. I see you have more storage here. Yes, this is my main storage, and then the, uh, the rest is overflow. Your main storage, and then you have your storage for your storage. There's the modeling heads. 
That's so many dragons. <laughs> oh my goodness. So many skulls. Do we have an XP farm? Yes, Splash. I think so. If that's what you showed me earlier, I'm pretty sure that was what it was. Uh, yes, we have a, a mob loot farm. Um, the I accidentally broke the XP farm in the end on accident. The wither kind of was like not happening. <laughs> I think I actually so I picked up a black reset. stained glass flame. Glass oh, that's okay. Glass you can either drop it and I can pick it up, or you can just have it as a gift, either one. No, I, I don't even know what any of it does. You literally showed me that it does the uh, the glowy thing in the sky, and that was all in it. You broke my Netherland arm? Yes, I, I did. Enderman. On, on the, uh, yep. Enderman. The, ah. the, 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 yeah, yeah, the... The, uh... Endermite ended up getting killed by the Wither. Because I was trying to put the Wither back underneath the, um... End portal, and I don't know if it's patched or if I'm doing it wrong. like my handiwork. <laughs> Is that mine? That definitely looks like something I would do. I'm sorry, that's mine. I've got enough Ender Pearls, so I should be able to spot another Endermite. I don't 100% know how to get it in that minecart, though. Because you you did some very much work with that, and I, I definitely was very saddened when I saw that I accidentally broke it. I'm in such a weird place because I know 30 minutes is not enough time to start anything. But I also feel like we've looked at all the things. Will the spider drown? Um, yes. But depending on trombone, no gossip on add you to the list. Sorry. Is Bat still playing uh, Citizen Sleeper? Is he enjoying it? I'm very concerned I can't be there to defend it. I need him to love the game. Today in seventh grade, there was a moment when other students were having their friends raise one hand or to me, I solemnly swear, and was half expecting it to end that I'm up to no good, but instead it was something about not repeating what was said in the group. Interesting. They knew. They had to know. Everybody knows Harry Potter. What is that cave entrance? I love that. Where is that? I want, I want to go in there. I want to see what's inside. I'm so curious. Ah, uh, reminds me I gotta work on that bow. Ooh. That would 
been Grim Demise. Where's it end? Oh, leave me alone. And it ended something about the quack quack of America instead of the United States of America. Trombone, I think that was where we got we you got confused is that you actually aren't talking about your students, you're talking about some ducks you saw. And now it all makes sense. It was ducks all along. Where am I? I love this. Tuxie's lovely abode. It is lovely. <laughs> you got a villager sleeping. Nice. Another villager. Got some suits of armor. Another villager. I like that his suits of armor are praising the sun. This place is super cool. Bank hobby. Oh, he's got another portal. Or they. I don't know if it's here. Trombone, you still haven't answered me. Is Baby 30 Bat still playing? Do you know? Is he enjoying it? I'm in that mode where I'm like super curious and also ready to be offended. that I did that. But neat. He's still playing, so at least at least he likes it that much. I get distracted and missed your response in the last few minutes. I'm just painfully curious. Good ball. There's no way this is still Chiltendo. I don't know. I think it is. And there's 10 hours of music. There's no way we worked through 10 hours of music. Oh, you said something about the quacks and I missed it. Oh, I was explaining to you that uh, it turns out you actually, I thought you were telling a story about your students, but you must have misspoken and meant to say that. You were actually telling a story about the ducks yourself. That's what you saw the You were just confused. I was telling us to, yes, I'm joking. I'm pulling your leg. I'm yanking your chain. I'm 
gli occhi. The same one swearing in a group. Compass is going crazy. Does that mean that something has happened with my lodestone? Or it got like desynced? Pineapple, you or like? your lodestone is in the nether. Shouldn't have been. I do not 100% know why then it would be. Are you sure it's the, that is your one and that's not somebody else's? I'm like 99% sure. Is your lodestone back at your... um The water base. Water base? Okay. I can check it out real quick. Can't even tell you what else happened today because it wasn't family friendly. Yeah, it sounds like it. I don't think that's most of the stories, though. The limitations of a family-friendly stream. The same reason we'll never be able to play Danganronpa as much as I want to. Where is your lodestone in your house? I have no idea. I can't remember. But I, I could have sworn that Splash gave it to me and he told me to put it in my water base or something. And I remember sinking it and doing the thing. So either I dreamt that or something got messed up along the way. Wait, who all is that I hear? It is just me and Pineapple. Splash is in the Correct. realm with us, or at least was. Yeah, Splash is in the realm with us, but not in the chat. Yeah. Do you have any luck finding it? Not at the moment. <laughs> you have a... Um... Maybe somebody took it. It's possible. I've also had a couple things despawn in me as well. Oh no. Uh, I think it was when the world generation updated and ended up messing up a few things. Little bro is asleep, can't voice chat. You're all good, Splash. I mean, we're almost done with stream anyway. We only got a 15 minute. If it is somewhere, I do not see it. Well, I mean, if it despawned, that would make sense why it was going all wonky, because it's never been loaded to a, a stone. The stone has disappeared. Because my wonder is if it's linked to the um, nether lodestone at the moment. I got no clue. Oh, man. Somewhere up here. No, I did show up my students today with bats, and he said, nope, not okay with that, in response. Gonna go work on the new mini game for Minecraft Mario Party. Have fun, Splash. We'll look to unveil it this Friday at the Checkathon, happening from 4 until midnight. I think we decided on Mario Party at 9. Does that sound right? Like 8.30 or 9? Or 9.30? One of those times. I like it. It was definitely going to be after the Level 2 podcast. I think that's what we decided. Level 2 podcast is happening at 8. So. 
That's yeah. so weird. Whenever the level two podcast wraps. Oh man, I'm a Zando. I think those nights are catching up on me. Those late nights of playing too much Citizen Sleeper. <laughs> Still need to plan for the podcast, make sure I have my stuff together for that. It's a pretty easy exam. You could always just take it again. I think I'm going to take mine again. Get my survey renewed. I took it so long ago. I'm a different person than I was. Two and a half years ago, almost three years ago. Man, I had so much fun on these caves. Such good memories. I've been on a couple of world adventures and I saw some pretty neat ones as well. I I will I cannot describe the joy of finding okay like a uh, whatever it is where there's like the old railways and stuff oh the band mine chefs mm -hmm. that is my favorite thing in this game whenever I'm just digging and exploring and having fun and just you know looking for looking for golden diamonds and then I see what looks like an old mine shaft and I'm like this is the greatest day of my life every single time it makes me so happy Because it feels like there's I, there's probably not even that much random possibility, but it feels like there's so much possibility when you find that. Because you're like, there might be some mystery treasure chests that you're going to get. And there might be some exciting things in those treasure chests. And it's probably just going to be the same old stuff that it always is. But, possibility. I found one uh, cave on one of my other worlds that was actually very cool because uh, it went all the way down at the very bottom of it was an ancient city and above it was a abandoned mine shaft that spanned uh, across the canvas that it was created by the uh, ancient city I've never even found an ancient city now I need to find an ancient city uh, you will need to go out to a new uh, chunk you need to go out to a what? you need to go out to a new chunk uh, because this uh, world was made in a older um, world generation, uh, in order to get to the new generation to start, you have to go to chunks that have not been loaded in yet. Interesting. Have we Which not is explored kind of... any of this world? The world is over 13, I think, million blocks. So that's a yes. There's actually a chance you can find some cool it. stuff in a mine shaft, says Splash. I yeah, you can find, uh, I think, God Apples as well. Which, Which is, of course, the cool. thing that I know what it does. Uh, that gives you the most amount of um, damage resistance, fire resistance, and also gives you the most amount of regeneration. It is much better than a golden apple. Trombone, the gotcha pond is empty right now, so you got added to the list. That was your gotcha pun. I actually don't know if the golden apple gives you fire resistance. Yeah, we've had back-to-back -back meetings and streams today. And honestly, I have that as well for tomorrow. So I really don't know. Gotcha pun might not happen again until uh, checkathon. It will probably be filled oh, it does not. right before the checkathon. So the golden apple does not give you fire resistance, but the enchanted apple, or god apple, as most people know it as, is uh, will give you it. Have you seen an LA? A what? I'll take that as a no. <laughs> Are you heading back over here? Yep. Heading back to okay. the main, the main, the town square, as it were. I shall bring an LA with me. Splash also said a what? Oh, 
Oh, what in the world? It's adorable. How do I play as that? I want to play as that character. I I do not think you can play as him. <laughs> but he is a um a mob that was recently added in the last mob vault. And what he does is he carries items around. So if you see, oh, come back here. He he uh, carries items in his hands that you can give him. And whatever item he has in his hands, he will also go around and pick up and bring back to whoever put the item in, put the item there. So I currently have him uh, holding seeds. So if I throw my seeds onto the ground, he will run over and grab those seeds. And then he brings them back to me. And how do you find him? Uh, he can be found in the Ch -ch -ch Woodland Mansion or in Pillager um, outposts in the cages. And do you just like put a lead on him to make him your friend? How do you get him to your friend? Uh, you just give him an item. If I oh, take away his item at this moment in time, he is now no longer bound to me. So then he goes around and does whatever he wants to do and wanders. But as soon as I give him an item, then he is bound to me. Does he stay like close by? Uh, yes, he will follow me. Uh, he he doesn't have the greatest I, uh, following AI, so he kind of tends like, to get say, lost. Say you haven't given him an item. Where does he does he stay within a? Uh, I think he just wanders. I don't know exactly if he stays in somewhere specific, but I believe he just wanders. Fascinating. Well, he's adorable. He reminds me of a chow. I also found out why you can't see my skin as well. I'm pretty sure. There's a setting in your um in your settings that does not allow for unauthorized um skins and such of that sort. And so basically that is for um I don't know specifically where it is. Maybe game settings, I'd have to look it back up again. Servers. Nope, that's not it. There should be a setting. I just don't know where the setting is. Ah. Uh, only allow trusted skins. Yep. And then if you turn that off, then it Aha! should pop up. Nice. <laughs> Love it. We officially see Pineapple Pope as he really is. Oh my goodness, your true self. Yes. Oh, and it's also got a uh, thing on the back as well. <laughs> a small, a, a smaller version of your of your skull. The duck is looking at it. <laughs> oh, I've got the seeds in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is on your back, man? I love that. Chats in the clap from Trombone. On the fine apple aesthetic. So did you make that or did you buy it? Uh, I made that. There is, um, so I borrowed the design and then edited it. So it is actually a, uh, I'm pretty sure a priest design that I edited to work with uh, the pineapple. And there's a website uh, that you can go to to edit skins and such of that sort. And then I found out that you can port um, the skins that you make, because in Java, they don't have the marketplace at all. And so you get all your skins through um, the web service, but they actually added it to where you can import your um, skins from Java over to Bedrock. Which I found that was fairly interesting. Oh my goodness. Well, y'all baffle me. You continue to baffle me. I do not understand. This immaculate. This building is so absurd. It doesn't even look halfway done. I'm still wondering what happened to all the, um, quartz that we put into the box there 
if if that has already all been used yet or if that's just sitting in an inventory because i think it was me and uh can't remember who the other person was splash uh helped out with that heading to bed trombone get some rest get some rest we're about to wrap up anyway if you wanted to stick around for a second to make our raid look bigger that would be fun. there we go <laughs> but i understand you need to get to bed appreciate you oh dear i died wait whoopsie dips uh oh I'll go get my things and then we'll wrap up stream. We'll go raid maybe 30 bats, especially if he's playing a game that I recommended. I feel like that's only right. It's a good and faithful thing. Still don't understand why I fell. It is what it is. But I appreciate the tour, Pineapple. Appreciate you showing us the uh, extravagant realm that we continue to build for everybody that's watching this or watching the vod because you're a minecraft fan know that you're always welcome to join our realm we uh we have the code on our discord we'd love to have you there to explore build a place just treat it well do good do no harm strive to grow in that space too um respect it as best as you can we have had some people come in and troll it once but i was able to restore it but i would rather not have to do that again because that was like an 11 o'clock in the night call i'll never forget it I'll never forget. I think I got a message from Buish. And it was at like, it was straight up at like 11.30. And Buish messaged me and was like, hey man, somebody set the Minecraft server on fire. <laughs> oh, jeez. Like, I said, what are you talking about? Someone set the Minecraft server on fire. Like, do I need to alert the authorities? And he was like, oh no. He's like, it's nothing that serious. It's just some, some people wanting to troll. He was like, but maybe you can try and revert a save. And so I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know anything about Minecraft. I've literally played it like three times at this point. And so I went in and went into the like settings and found where the old saves were and was able to like download it and uh, <laughs> managed to find an old save file that pulled it together for us. But that was such a stressful thing to do. Like in my pajamas out in my living room in the middle of the night, entire families in bed. And I'm trying to render an old save in Minecraft. Truly, I think I'm one of the few pastors that can say that. I feel like I feel like I'm gonna hold that title boldly and say I'm among the few that's able to say that my my late night clerical calls <laughs> are, are uh, to restore Minecraft servers. I think that I think that's pretty unique. That's special. Should be right here in this box. Beautiful. And with that, we're gonna go raid maybe thirty bats. Uh, who is Huzzah. playing Citizen Sleeper? At my request, and so I gotta go support him. Represent one of our own, and I'm gonna log out here. Thanks again, Pineapple. Appreciate you. Very welcome. Very welcome. Jesus. All right, folks, we're Checkpoint Church. We are really a church. I am really a pastor here. We're going to be streaming again tomorrow morning, bright and early, hopefully finishing up Beacon Pines. Um, we'll see. We'll see how we're able to make that work. But my plan is to finish Beacon Pines in the morning. I hope I hope we're almost done. I just can't imagine how much crazier the story, is, the story could possibly get. in the morning. Yeah. I hope I hope. Hello. We're... Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Nathan. Really just trying to turn off my controller. Uh, but yeah. We're gonna go. We're gonna go raid maybe thirty bats real quick. Uh, if you will spam some you matters in the chat because we believe three things to be true about every single one of you out there. The number one that God loves you, really, really loves you. Number two, we love you. We want community with you. That's what we're doing here on the channel and on our YouTube and on our Discord. Number three, we believe that you, yes, you matter. You are a person of sacred worth. The world is a better place. Why? Because you are in it, folks. With that, go spam some you matters in the chat for our friend maybe thirty. 
and I will see you guys hopefully tomorrow morning. If not tomorrow morning, then I hope to see you maybe Friday night from four until midnight for our charity stream uh, or some other time, maybe on the Discord. I'll catch you around and I appreciate you being here. Folks, again, we really, really do mean what we say when we say it. God loves you. We love you. You matter. We're happy that you're here. Um, we're glad that you're a part of this community. And I hope you enjoyed this night. I hope you're doing well. And look forward to seeing you soon. Okay, till next time. Bye-bye!